also, do we want to do like a bit like, because that's the other thing, Jade. We are uh, <laughs> on board the USCSS podcast. That is our our M class towing vessel. Okay. Oh, we're in a towing vessel. I mean, that's okay. generally what M classes are. Yeah, usually. Anyway. Oh well. As far as we know, we just picked we just picked numbers and like letters and co- like signs we saw in the movies and just mashed them together. Okay, I love that. I think we determined last episode uh, that this is we're actually on the Sulaco from Aliens. We stole it and we're now space pirates. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Right. Something like that. But yeah. we just we just float around in space podcasting. Yeah, I think we determined that like we found it like abandoned and in drift and we were all like, "Who boy, rubbing our hands together." And then we got on, we were like, "This is ours now." Oh, that's cool. So we're not really pirates, we're more just like squatters. More yeah, more we're or less. We're space squatters. I we'd love actually, that. We'd have to actually rob another ship to be classified as pirates, I suppose. Well, maybe that'll happen in one yeah. of the episodes. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Maybe uh we're robbing your ship. Uh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> you're taking me hostage. <laughs> Or you're just robbing me, and do I join your crew? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's a right. me- this is messy. This is all yeah. staying in the episode. All this figuring it out too. Are you serious? Uh, why not? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we got the episode's got to have an opening, you know. Okay. Well. So here, so we, so you are in space. Mm-hmm. You're flying around in your ship. What's your ship yeah. called? The, oh shit. The, ta- the Taco Bell. <laughs> The taco, <laughs> the right. taco, yeah, the Baja Blaster. The Baja Blaster, know. okay. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. And we, in our stolen uh, USCSS Sulaco, now renamed the podcast, mm-hmm. have uh, picked up. Uh, you're in our. You're in the cargo bay. Okay. And and we're just. I'm just filling in the listeners because they didn't hear all the commotion when we were like picking up your ship and everything. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, you're just telling me things I already know. My ship right. with my one terraforming vessel. I'm a lone terraformist. <laughs> just yeah, well, it's your contract an, work, right? I'm an artist, actually. <laughs> Under the guise of a terraformer. Yeah, it's the ultimate form of yeah. art. But like, you sculpt the environment, man exactly i'm also i'm also high as fuck that's why i was so easy to rob (laughs) yeah i don't i feel bad though like like we call ourselves pirates but i don't i don't really want to rob like cool people hey that's just the way it is man how about i can i can join you and then we can go rob someone lame sure yeah let's go rob uh, some some company motherfuckers, right? Yeah. Oh hell yeah, some squares. Yeah, some real huge nerd ass dorks. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Oh, oh. my do- sorry, my dog just got really mad at me. <laughs> I guess the dog's a company man. Yeah. Oh, boo. Boo. That's his name. Is it really? Yeah, his name is Boo. I should have known. Welcome to Crew Expendable. The very well prepared and thought out podcast where we take a trip through the alien universe. I am uh, crane operator Neil. I'm terraformist Jade. Uh, I forgot that every episode we had to have a. Uh, um, uh, Kenny, you forgot your rank. To think of, <laughs> yeah, I forgot what my, my title was. Uh, 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 come back to me. We've we've picked up a, uh, a terraforming vessel, uh, captained by Terraformist Jade. Yeah, Terraformist Jade. I'm here. I'm ready to. I'm ready to make some mountains, move some lakes, <laughs> move some lakes. Yep. Careful, they might be populated with mutant sharks. That was in one of the comic books. Oh, there were like awesome. alien sharks in a comic book. It was rad. Were they like xenomorph sharks? They certainly were. Yeah, dude. Yes. Oh. That. I'm Google image searching that. Yeah, right type now. in. I think it's. I think they call him the Deacon Shark. Deacon. Okay. Yeah. This is good. This will buy some time. Oh, this looks awesome. It's like a goblin shark. Oh wait, there's literally a picture of a goblin uh, goblin shark. Are you just looking at a real picture of a real shark? This yeah, is from like, a Whoa, this shit's crazy. It's so <laughs> realistic. No, I can see the Deacon Shark. This is really cool. Stuff of nightmares. I did a shark experiment with some kids the other day for part of a class I was teaching, and I taught them how a shark's large, fatty liver helps them control their buoyancy. 
gives nice. them neutral buoyancy in the water so they don't yeah. float or sink. I am learning so much on this podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why I'm the terraformist. Kenny's been teaching me all about <laughs> Greek mythology. You're coming in with the shark liver facts. Yep. It's great. I just feel like a dummy. I got nothing to offer anybody. <laughs> you got the crane. <laughs> sure, I can I can operate a crane pretty well. I sure hope it doesn't get melted with acid before I get to use it. Uh-oh. I think the likelihood of that happening is pretty low in the alien universe. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, you got it's your rank funny. yet? Yeah, I've decided I'm the navigator. Navigator Kenny, and we are just uh, a bunch of uh, fucking colonizers walking walking our way through the wheat fields of the alien universe there we go got it what are we talking about today gang uh today we're talking about the 2017 movie alien covenant the covenant only covenant that matters yeah the easily the best movie in the entire series clearly right everybody's favorite film in the alien canon uh sure <laughs> whatever whatever you say and we've got I, our, just, I just joined this crew <laughs> we've got our special guest terraformer jade here expert in all things mountain moving jade what's your uh, history with the alien franchise yeah well i do not think it's nearly as in-depth as either one of y'all but um i i really love the first movie as oh, i think yeah. every, everyone who's like watched it does the one with um, taste anyway yeah i watched it as part of a creative right. writing class when i was 15 because my teacher just put movies on for us in that class wow. and yeah which was kind of cool i guess but um That's and an it was one intense movie to watch at school <laughs> yeah it's just a classroom <laughs> full of teenagers <laughs> yeah she was pretty cool we also watched shrek in that class nice so <laughs> um yeah that was the first it was like one of the first scary movies i really liked it actually i think was like a big gateway into me actually watching scary movies um i think it was a good first like one for me to get into because i'm like well i'm not in space right now so right. this won't keep me up at night like a ghost movie or like serial killer movie would um and then i watched aliens yeah. um in college and uh, my friends that showed me aliens they were like oh this is better than the first one oh um, boy and i really disagree it's just more of an action movie <laughs> like yeah i mean i really like it. it's still right. a good movie but i'm just like no first movie is way better and then i rewatched the first movie kind of recently Th <laughs> thank you and then um I've been wanting, I had been wanting to watch Prometheus and Covenant for a while because they just sounded interesting, like yeah. whenever I heard things about them, but I also heard that they were really bad. So I was like, uh, um, but my, uh, like I was saying before we started recording, my roommate is a huge alien fan. She just loves sci-fi in general and she owns like all the movies I just talked about on Blu-ray. So nice. we watch, we watch Prometheus and Covenant, um, back to back on like, you know, like a Friday and Saturday and really, really like talking about like the themes and stuff. Oh, That's boy. my favorite thing about this movie is the themes. <laughs> Full of themes, both of those movies. Yeah. Cause I don't watch oh, it yeah, for the plot sure. or the characters. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be doing yourself yeah. a disservice. I think if you did watch like Prometheus for the characters <laughs> yeah. in particular, yeah. cause none yeah. of the characters are developed really you know no no they're really bad um and i heard that you had that take also yeah on one, another episode but while i was kind of doing like light outside movie research to talk about talk about it on the podcast i did discover that there's an alien like role-playing game like a tabletop yes, there game is. that sounds very fun there certainly is. I own all of the books for it. Whoa. So y'all are definitely going to talk about that on here, right? Absolutely. Or I guess it would be more fun or later. to actually play it on the podcast. So, anyway, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. Well, anyway. <laughs> we are we are talking about that, doing that. Yeah, yeah. that is one, it's one thing we've been like discussing doing for a future episode. Do you want to play? Yes. <laughs> yes, I love tabletop RPGs. Um, so I'm super down. I would love to play <laughs> and then i could actually role play alien <laughs> right, right. yeah we'll get that together we're definitely going to get that together i was talking to a friend of mine the other day and i asked him if he would be interested in possibly doing it and he is also down so really we only need like one or two more people and then we could start doing it if we wanted to 
Yeah, I can absolutely. Oh, my yeah. friend Carissa will definitely join. Nice. So, and force cool. her to come on this podcast also. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bada bing. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm i surprised you asked me to be on this podcast because, once again, very little familiarity with the Alien franchise. That's all right. But, we want to represent all types of fans. And yeah. like not to spoil anything, but you did say that you like this movie. So that's when I was immediately like, okay, do you want to do that one on the podcast? And you're like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh <laughs> well yeah i guess i wasn't i'm intimidated to talk about it but i do have things to talk about you were it's, more enthusiastic than that <laughs> yeah i'm pretty enthusiastic anyway okay so your so your history with aliens relatively recent just briefly um not going to go into the whole thing i saw the first alien movie when i was literally a child and it scared the shit out of me it's like the one movie like horror movie movie monster that i'm absolutely terrified of still like to this day so it was definitely the movie i saw too young but mm -hmm. created this lifelong fascination with the series also and kenny you didn't really watch the movies until a, a few years ago is that correct yeah it was only maybe three or four years ago when i started watching them for the first time yeah so we're representing like all all different you know familiarities with the genre or with the series so you're a perfect fit jade Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. But yeah, I, I'm glad. Okay, so I didn't know Kenny. I guess I knew you mentioned in another episode that you had only recently watched the movies, but I didn't know if like there was some other like you came. It would be super interesting if you came at it from like I read the books or like the comic books first and then the watched the movies. I would love to meet the person who's never watched a movie and only read the comic book series that would be so yeah. interesting yeah that's kind of how Corey is with mortal Kombat. like he's now seen all of the tv shows and read all the <laughs> comics and played very few of the games that's true i've talked to him about that yeah. he's like yeah well i didn't grow up with mortal Kombat." and i'm just like oh yeah i forgot that you're just like <laughs> you have this really weird niche yeah. information about this franchise he was just like <laughs> fuck it sure i'll do that show and now his brain is filled with nonsense oh yeah so uh, we're talking about Alien Covenant. Kenny, it's your turn, I think, to read the uh, summary, the little brief, brief, uh, whatever it's called. S summary works. Look, I'm like uh, three quarters of the way through a Colt 45 high gravity tall boy myself. Are so, you really? <laughs> yeah. All right. And that in that case, I'm going to hit my vape. <laughs> this will be like a little cheers. Go for it. I mean, they smoke on uh, space ships, so... Well, I'm not going to smoke inside, but well, smoke know. a cigar. I mean, you can. Yannick does in the in uh, Prometheus. Someone's name is Yannick? That's uh, Idris Elba in Prometheus. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Captain Yannick. That's another layer to the themes. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Kenny, you, you want to hit us with that summary? After deciding to investigate a weird signal, the crew of the colony ship Covenant end up on a planet that shouldn't exist where they pretty much just end up getting killed by threats both new and familiar. We also find out more about Xenomorphs than we ever wanted to know. And? Plus, Neil finally gets to talk about that scene where David kisses Walter, which he's brought up multiple times. At least there's that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that with you too, because I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> from the way i've heard you describe it is not how i watched that scene you know it's also not how i watched that scene when i watched the movie again but uh it still happened so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of kissing in this david movie. does a lot of kissing i forgot about the other kissing he does yeah yeah, yeah. there's yep yeah. dude's a creep which is He's we go, boo, what a creep. And I feel creepy <laughs> obsessing over the part where Michael Fassbender kisses Michael Fassbender now, having seen it again for the first time in quite a while. It is not how I remembered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it turns I'm out glad. it's not as big of a deal as you remembered it being. Yeah. So in my well, head, <laughs> and I've seen this movie several times, but in my head, it was during the flute scene, not during the scene it was actually in so the the flute scene was more much more sensual actually sensual right. that's probably why my like, brain just plugged that in there because it's like yeah. that's where it, it belongs in the context that maybe i wanted it 
Yeah, you're right? more emotionally well adjusted than David is. Yeah. I will say that. Dude's a at least from what I've seen of you. <laughs> I mean, I've been working hard at it the past few years, yeah. so thank you. I guess you, you could have a secret lab in your basement that I don't know well, about. I don't. But... First of all, I'm living in Florida. There's no basements here. True. Uh, uh, automatically, yeah, guess... can't have that. In your sunroom. <laughs> we call them Florida rooms here because in... <laughs> we're idiots. <laughs> Wait, is that true? That's actually true. Huh. Now that, well, now I've learned something. The more you know, I suppose. The house I grew up in didn't have a sunroom or a Florida room. So I was talking to this girl in middle school on the phone and she was like, I'm hanging out in the Florida room. And I was like, what's a Florida room? Aren't those all the rooms here? Yeah, I was so confused. She had to like try to explain it to me. And I was like, I am not understanding this at all. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as an adult, though, I understand. I, I'm well versed in two things, Florida rooms and bay windows. I know all about both of those. <gasps> I love bay windows. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> back to Alien Covenant. Yeah, so general thoughts. Uh, I'll start with you, Jade. What do you think of this movie? All right. So as I kind of said earlier, I like watching this movie to think about themes and such. I mean, I do kind of like, there's some cool set pieces too, yeah. I'll say. I love the like city question mark is oh. it a city or is it just one big building it's city like, i think it's city like I, mean, I like the courtyard that they have to run through a couple times with all the dead bodies all the it's very yeah. mm -hmm. it's very pompeian i feel like that was maybe on like a again this and prometheus just love making like kind of intellectual parallels between like historical slash like old art things yes. so i feel like the parallels to pompeii are probably on purpose because it's like you know old times <laughs> that we romanticize and like think about a lot um yeah, i mean in that opening scene like peter whalen just straight up had michelangelo's david in his weird sunroom yeah, he just like had it yeah. yes yeah i literally i have so many notes from that like that opening scene might be the scene I have a bunch of notes in the opening scene and then I have a bunch of notes for like every scene where David and Walter are talking because that's the stuff that I care about the most in this movie because nice. um, I think it's the most compelling. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, David and then there's a nativity scene. There's Wagner entry, you know, entry of the gods into Valhalla. Yeah. The word covenant is like a very evocative sort of word. So these are the sorts of things that I like. Ozymandias, like these are the sorts of things that I like to think about. And I think it's like a quotable movie, but I think it's still very stupid. It's like smart. <laughs> it's like smart, stupid. Right. Like, yeah, like it's fun. It's like astrology is kind of how <laughs> I think of it. Like, I like astrology and I think about it a lot. And I like knowing the ins and outs of astrology right. and discussing it with my friends. But I also think it's kind of dumb. It's like, got like um, Ted Mosby yeah. energy, right? <sighs> What's I don't know if, if you've watched uh, How I Met Your Mother, but he's just like pretentious, like to the point of uh, being annoying okay. and stupid. It's yes, got, like that is it's like the kid, like the guy in college trying to show off how smart he is. Yes, that's what David. But the thing is, like, if I accept that characterization of David and his dad, like Wayland, yeah. like I can accept that and absorb it into the universe and it like makes sense in universe and i think makes the movie better probably if i'm just like david's just well he's like a he's like a teenager yeah. and I, you know, he I mean he's older but like it makes sense where the whole thing is like there's like the commentary on like love and like the meaning of love right. and how david expresses love i think is very interesting and like I, I do put him in a category of just like a lot of men <laughs> being like yeah. very, very emotionally immature, except with him, you know, he's emotionally immature because he's an android and it goes to like a sociopathic kind of level. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. But he still kind of does have feelings. I don't know. Like, I know he's not supposed to have feelings, but no, that, that was very clear that like in Prometheus, they set up all the stuff like he understands emotion, but he doesn't feel them. But in that but movie, you clearly see him feeling them. And in this one, you certainly see it. Like if he's just oh, yeah. like the her, kissing, <laughs> the crying, everything. I mean, like, the yeah, if he's just like worked on himself and like been able to like, 
I don't know, update his software or something. Like <laughs> he's adding lines of code so that he can like experience all of those things in any case. Yeah, he needs to add a line of code that's like empathy, I think. Yeah. That he never got to empathy. Severely, um, severely lacking in empathy. Which makes sense though, because he's an Android. So and that's, you know, empathy is something that human people struggle with. Yeah. It's um, true. but I think that this really took like the line from Prometheus about like the soul, you know, like David doesn't have a soul. Right. And I think it kind of is like he does have a soul, but it's like corrupted. Right. A lot of obviously a lot of Lucifer parallels also, you know. Oh, yeah. Would you rather serve in heaven or reign in hell? I feel like is a very, very direct like Oh, David is supposed to be Lucifer, like specifically like a fallen yeah. angel figure. I mean, they, they um, outright say it like when Orin wants to equal God. Yeah. When Orin is like, I saw the devil as a child and I never forgot him when he's talking to David. Yes. Yeah. But then he still like kind of trusts David, no. which is well, really stupid. Because he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he, so dumb. All the characters in this movie. Are Again, there. just like in Prometheus. A lot of idiots why, on this crew. Why you'd think that they would have fixed that from the last movie, you know? Yeah. But they just maintained it. And then they did other things, but that was something I really wanted. That's like my, one of my biggest disappointments with this movie is that after watching Prometheus, I was like, well, I know Covenant's supposed to be better. Maybe not everyone will be so stupid. Um, but for the most part, they are. <laughs> <laughs> like with the helmet thing. <laughs> yeah, the fucking, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just wear a mask or something on this yeah. brand new planet, guys. Like you don't know anything know. about it. She's like, "Oh, let me go. I'm gonna go start the biological survey." Right. It's like. Shouldn't you guys keep your helmets on until after the fuck? Like, what if there's just like a bug that like it bites you and yeah. you die? Or it you, flies you... into your ear and infects you. <laughs> yeah. Or like, 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 like poking mushrooms, then something comes out and you're like, oh, that was weird. It's probably nothing. <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. Like, I do that in real life and I clap my hands over my mouth and like run away as quickly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I live on Earth. So, oh, you do really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. I'm from Earth. Man, you, you, so. you really piloted that uh, Taco Bell Baja <laughs> blaster way into deep space. If you're all the way from Earth, I, know. I, know, I don't know. Right. It, it, people get the concept. I'm going to add some sound mm -hmm. effects and stuff. Uh, <laughs> some soda sound effects. <laughs> oh, shit. That's what my, yeah, that's what my. That's what my ship runs Your ship's on. propelled, but it's like a fountain, like a soda fountain that just shoots. <laughs> yeah, like Baja in a blast. child cartoon <laughs> this is just a commercial for Baja or it's blast. like two like two liters like on like on each side and you just open the caps and then it <laughs> no i love that it's very whimsical <laughs> i um yeah i'm sponsored so that's why i can afford to be a one-man crew smart yeah get that branding yep get the brand deal kenny what did you think of the movie uh, in general now you watched this one one time you told me you didn't remember anything about it yeah i watched this um uh, not long after i watched um the main four i watched the main four and then like a week later i watched prometheus and then covenant back to back and i haven't okay. seen this movie since i watched it that first time and so yeah i didn't fucking right. remember a single goddamn thing about it there was like two things about it that i remembered and uh -huh. none of them well one of them ended up actually being plot relevant but the other one is that i remembered the movie opened with a flashback sure but i couldn't remember what the flashback of, was of or to or with i just remember that there was a flashback in it and so yeah. going back and watching it uh yesterday it was effectively the first time i'd seen it although while i was watching it things were starting to like slowly come to me uh -huh. and like overall i thought this movie was actually pretty good it was it's basically like structurally it's pretty much exactly the same thing as prometheus except oh, yeah. this time the aliens are uh, xenomorphs <laughs> right and so that kind of gives it a leg up right there but uh i mean like it was i thought it was a little bit too long it did some things that i am not entirely sure were completely necessary 
and yeah. uh, it went place it, like there were a couple of moments that in the movie it did things or went places that I was like, eh, I would have preferred to see something else. But um, overall, I think the movie wasn't bad. I did enjoy watching it. And like the last probably, I don't know, 45 minutes of it or so, yeah. I found to be like overall, like genuinely thrilling and fun to watch. So overall, I guess it was a uh, capital F fine, I suppose okay yeah i agree about the ending i think being i think the ending is way stronger than the rest of the movie but it is also a very long movie so the second time around i was kind of like not like waiting for the end because there is like other compelling stuff that happens but i was just kind of like the rewatchability i think went down pretty hard for this okay this this being my second time but i do still really like it yeah yeah so i have watched this movie uh i saw it in theaters when it came out i think i bought it immediately when it got released like on digital and i back to backed it with prometheus into alien covenant with some friends um watched it maybe twice since then uh my, my opinion's always been uh, it was pretty good i remember when i first saw it like really being like i think i liked it but i have to do a lot of headcanon shit to make it work for me in the scope of the entire alien franchise Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i need another movie to like really solidify how i feel about this one which obviously we haven't gotten yet and i don't think ever will get in like a direct sequel to alien covenant so yeah probably not i was thinking about like how would i start a sequel to this movie yeah and having kind of a hard time i don't know it's very it feels so cliffhangery that I'm just like, where do you go, like, directly from here? Like, I feel like it would have to be, like, a, I don't know, like... You have to, like, immediately deal with the David of it all, right? Yeah, yeah, like, what happens to David? Yeah. Like, because he's a, he's a major force. He loves fucking shit up. Yeah. Well, he does, he. <laughs> he certainly does. I don't know. I, I don't know how I had to do a sequel to this. I mean, I have a feeling that he would just, he just takes over the ship, lands it, unloads the colonists, and just starts doing experiments on them you know yeah so like what's that what what does that movie look like Like it's just like a a big crash ship on a planet full of aliens and maybe wayland yutani coming to see what's going on yeah 20 years i guess that's always how these movies i guess these movies always kind of the inciting incident is hey what's going on over here (laughs) (laughs) pretty much like you guys need to be less inquisitive (laughs) yes yeah it's definitely big stay in your lane energy in these uh these movies um, yeah. so, so I remember liking it fine again, but when I watched it yesterday, I fucking loved and felt every single minute of this movie. And I was not expecting that. Oh. Like, I don't know what, what's wrong with me right now. Something's going on. <laughs> I have no idea. Like my emotions in general have kind of been on the surface lately. Like, uh, mm. I, I was at work on Friday, I think. And I was just, I was the only one in the condo put in pocket doors and i was just like crying to the hamilton cast recording <laughs> so something's going on with me clearly which song uh all of them actually all of them definitely wow. satisfied absolutely okay um there's there's some songs on that i'm not even the biggest hamilton person but there's a couple songs there's a couple songs that will make me cry yeah. on that album <laughs> hey, things have just been getting to me lately i've been feeling things like i've seen that you know the the scene at the beginning of the movie when they're repair or not not the beginning but close to the beginning where they're repairing the solar sails mm, and i had like yeah. anxiety the entire scene they were doing the spacewalk like i was like i knew no one was gonna fucking fly away into space yeah, but I, I was like i did too oh shit what if what if this time it's different you know <laughs> yeah I even mentioned in my notes that that scene gave me the most anxiety of any scene in the yeah. entire movie because I was like, he's just like out there, man, like they're just alone. Free, they're like if one it out there, jet dude. goes weird, he's just fucking dead. That's true. Yeah. The, the first time I watched that, yeah, it, like I, I actually did genuinely get like kind of anxious watching that scene. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I definitely thought he was gonna go. And I will say, Tennessee is one of the most likable characters Tennessee's in this movie. Very likable. Yeah, he because he's got like he's got character traits you know like i don't know like he's like the idris elba of this movie 100 
Oh, I would I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they did a good job with the captain too, though, because like I don't like him, but I feel like I have an idea of what kind of guy he is. Of Orem, which, yeah. yeah, 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 which for this in Prometheus, I feel like is like you know that's like a basic that's like a basic writing thing, but I feel like for these two <laughs> movies is like oh yeah, that's a standout character. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then of course, um. Who's the main terraformist? Daniels. Daniels. Yeah. Um, I like her. I think she's a great her thing, protagonist. Yeah. I like her. And then um, of course, David and Walter. Walter. Walter's my boy. I love Walter. I, <laughs> I do like Walter. I, I'm still thinking about Walter. Um, like my thing with like if and of course, like these sorts of metaphors don't have to be completely literal. But like, if David is Lucifer, uh-huh. what is Walter? Like, just like an angel, uh, I guess. I think he's Joseph. Joseph. Sure, he's just there to like help out. <laughs> he's just there to help. He's just there to be a stepdad. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> a good stepdad. Yeah. Yeah, I I do like Walter. I like like when Walter's like, oh, this would be a great place for your cabin. I'm like, oh, Walter. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, like he's just. He's a cool guy. I do think that. Do we want to talk about the kissing scene? Like, uh, let's get let's get or to the it. Flute scene. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like what what direction we want to go with first. I mean, I'm good to talk. Um, honestly, like I'm good to talk about it now. Uh, just to sum up, yeah, I ended up really loving this movie and being very scared by this movie. Also, um, mm. I'm happy to talk about the 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 Walter David kissing scene. <laughs> <laughs> Partially to okay. set the record straight, like again, just just to repeat, like I was remembering it differently than it happened. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, like yeah, it's not as a hot, hot fast bender on fast bender action as no, you thought. No, it was huh? not. It was not hot. No. It was uh, it was sad. It was uncomfortable. It was rapey. It was not pleasant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like that is the thing with David in this movie. That's kind of his whole vibe is like a love and like it's interesting so it's like the thing one of my notes that i wrote down with david's like arc i guess is that in prometheus there's a lot of emphasis on him as the child as like the son um and like an incomplete son and you see him getting his like i guess i don't know like trauma like as like with his father oh, yeah. and his father something they reinforce know, telling... at the beginning of this movie also yes which honestly mm-hmm. like i think that scene is pretty heavy-handed but i also think that it does help like if you didn't see prometheus it's like okay this guy has daddy issues <laughs> yeah and issues with being an android and his dad was like had issues with being mortal so it's kind of like david is a lucifer but there is no god i guess besides like actual god like there's no character that is god so right. david's also having that like meeting the creator issue in the in prometheus and then anyway it was a it, i think it was a pretty economical way of like catching people up to those themes since like again i think those themes are the most important thing about this movie yeah more than like what actually happens even it's definitely what makes david such an interesting character i mean beyond the performance and everything like oh yeah and I, and my point was that in prometheus he was the emphasis was him as a child and in Covenant, the emphasis is him as like a partner and a father. Yeah. Um, in like that 10 year time skip, he is obviously like, obviously, he loves literature and movies and, you know, sure. again, pretentious teenage boy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm-hmm. He loves Catcher in the Rye. He loves Fight Club. He loves American Definitely Psycho. Got a copy of Infinite Jest on his nightstand absolutely so i'm sure he's thinking a lot about these archetypes and his role is like okay like if i want to be a man he's not just thinking about man and the generic human sense yeah. but his gender very much also um and i think again with him exploring like wanting to love wanting to be a partner yeah. to shaw and to daniels and to walter even kind of like like that might have been in a more brotherly way but like it it, again it's it's all very weird because he doesn't really 
the way that he loves people is obviously extremely selfish and like yeah. fucked up. He, he um, doesn't have a good role model as far as that goes. So like no. if he's developing yeah. all of these feelings and intuitions and stuff, he has no idea where to place them properly or what to do with them. Yes. Yeah. Again, he's like he's his he's just so emotionally immature. And then like he's seeing the xenomorphs like as his children. So like he obviously he wants to create and be a father. Like and and it's like this god complex, yeah. but it, it's it's like it's a god god complex on one level, but on another level, it is like I think this, he, like this his he's trying to fill like the emptiness in his. I think he does have a soul. Like I think it's literally that thing where he's like, this is what I'm supposed to do to like fill that empty feeling and like feel more human, which is not I think unique to an android. I think that is like a human can he he's suffering under the human condition. Yeah. <laughs> And, but, and it's he's doing really <laughs> fucked up shit because of it and i think and this is why i love this movie is because i could talk about this shit all day um yeah like it's very interesting to me well we, we um, will be recording for 24 hours so oh god i have to go to work tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. we'll just have you back for part with... two and three and four and five and six and oh, Jesus. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great but yeah the david the david um walter scene so like the first scene with them when he's sort of showing walter how to play the flute something that walter's not programmed to do not programmed to create quote unquote right clearly he was able to pick it up pretty quickly i could watch a 90 minute version of that scene personally yes yes it wasn't just impressive to me from even just like the filmmaking perspective because it's it there's no obvious like weird cuts or anything that make you think, oh, it's definitely body doubles or green screening or anything. The way the camera moves around it, like it feels just seamless, you know, not like, yeah. you know, how they normally film twin stuff. Right. Or like yeah, it, where it's like split down the middle of the screen. Yeah, like. They're crossing that line constantly and the camera's rotating and like they're holding the same object at the same time. And yeah, it was very impressive and just like a really, uh, really fun scene to watch. And like at that point in the movie, I wasn't honestly entirely convinced that David had fucked everything up and had gone evil. Like, as evil as clearly he had, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I suspected him, of course, because I had seen Prometheus. But then I thought, like, well, maybe the twist is that he's not, like, gone psychotic like I was expecting, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I was really into all of the, the David and Walter stuff, like... Well, it was compelling. This this movie is good because it does kind of make you root for him until there is that reveal. I feel like yeah. you're like, oh, you know, like again, this is an issue I have rooting for the toxic men in my life to be better <laughs> than they actually are sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like be like, oh, like I want David to be like good and like change and like have this connection with like Walter or whatever. Right. Um. And when the first time I saw this movie, the reveal of Shaw's body oh, was man. like, actually, it's so horrifying. Yes. Like, like you feel betrayed as an audience member. Yeah. At least I did. Yeah. I... You said you loved her. Like, I don't know. Like, I was like, damn you. Like, I hated that. I hated that. They said like, you know, they set Shaw up as like a, like, we're going to catch up with her in the sequel and they just kill her off between the movies, you know, and we see her as a, like a, dissected yeah. body yeah she's just unceremoniously killed off off screen yeah it's just it's lame like come on yeah. i yeah, was that... hoping for something better for the main character of the movie seriously and then this That's true. this movie ends in a similar way with uh daniel's realizing that it's walter on the ship and not or sorry that it's david on the ship and not walter and i'm like okay well D daniel's isn't making it into the sequel either clearly like no way da no way david's letting her live and i was like why do they why do they keep doing this? Like, yeah, those women are not the main character. Like David yeah. is the main character. Yeah. Which like it's, I'm really torn because obviously like, like I want these women to have more autonomy in these stories. This is like the whole thing with like horror movies. A lot of times for me yeah. where it's just like, they toe the line with like, cause horror movies I think have a lot more female protagonists than like, a lot of other genres yes. honestly um 
but they're always getting fucked up like even if they're doing like a good job so it's like you'll have this like woman like be doing like a great job like the whole time like with this movie and with prometheus and then it's like oh but david's he's just better he's smarter and he beat them it's like in the original Um, halloween continuity when they they killed off jamie lee curtis's character off screen in a car crash so in halloween 4 you pick up with her daughter it's exactly like it's disrespectful and like i get it as part of it's like a genre thing but also if these movies are trying to be so deep then you'd think that they would like do a little better by at least like the main the quote-unquote main characters yeah well maybe next time (laughs) (laughs) right because like i mean four four movies starring ellen ripley right like and like it was very clear that you know they had uh, woman protagonists in Prometheus and Covenant that were not just Ripley clones and not literally clones like in Resurrection, but like not trying to be the new Ripley. They were their own characters, not just copy paste. Um, it, it would be nice to see them pick up the the idea of like having an Ellen Ripley like character in a new series of alien movies, but they, but they just keep like killing them off yeah. after each movie and like. Well, they made their leads more disposable, like. Ripley is not a disposable character like she was the crux of it and you know they decided to lean more with these two on like just on the David storyline like I think it's just like they're like I I think he's literally just like the main character so even though these women are kind of set up to be the main characters they're really not I I think Shaw would have been a wonderful main character for multiple movies because she's a biologist oh yeah um and that's a perspective that you know ripley didn't have and so i think it i think that's a really cool it's a really cool thing to be in an alien movie and obviously they knew that because they made david get really into that stuff for covenant (laughs) so it's like yeah like it's almost like like yeah the franchise is like acknowledging it's like you have these pieces where it's like oh it would be cool if one of these characters did all these experiments on the aliens but it's not going to be shaw because she's dead because you know she's part of the experiments now yeah it's pretty disrespectful honestly um and i would have at least like because this is a movie with flashbacks in it sure that could have been a flashback it's already a long ass movie just take out one like take out one other scary scene so and replace it with a a scary flashback of how she died or something there is a deleted scene it's an extended version of what we saw in the movie when david brings in the juggernaut the covenant the covenant i do it every time the engineer ship and drops Mm -hmm. the vials um where it does show bits of their journey from I haven't watched it in a very long time. I watched it like back when, when this came out where like it shows Shaw like rebuilding him and then flying the ship and all of that kind of stuff. I don't think they get a lot of her in it, but they did have that in there and they decided to cut it. I don't, I don't know why, probably because the movie was too long already. Right. That's true. It is too long, but they should have cut something else. It's very long. That's true. It's, it's definitely way longer than it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of that is like, Like, again, I like the David alien experiment stuff. I feel like a lot of it is, like, either showing that all of the crew members are in a relationship with each other. Yes. Which is, like, that makes, like, yeah, I get it. It's, like, a call. It's a colony ship. Like, I understand. Yeah. (laughs) But I, and then um, also just doing, like, scary alien scene. Like, you know, the scenes that are in an alien movie Mm -hmm. yes of aliens killing people and honestly that's mostly what i'm here for with these like yeah which makes sense and which is why they have that in there but then i see for me i find that stuff to be like i obviously i like it but um i found the stupid high school boy android (laughs) soliloquy more interesting because that's just you know that's the sort of thing i'm into well yeah i mean i think i came around to that on this viewing i think originally i was kind of like get to the aliens right um Mm -hmm. but i think that i appreciated that more watching it this time the the high school boy drama 
Yeah. As you <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit the whole oh. let's get to the aliens. Let's see aliens killing people. Like that was pretty much my perspective for the entire movie. Like when an alien shows up for the first time, I even noted like the timestamp of it in my notes and wrote finally the movie's cooking with gas afterwards. Like that was the <laughs> moment I was waiting for. And then from then on, I was completely hooked. But the first like 45 minutes or so like it's good i'm not gonna say it's bad but like i was going through that entire 45 right. minutes going come on show me the monsters <laughs> i do think that that could probably be but that beginning part could probably be like trimmed down a little bit like that's the thing i feel like this this movie could definitely be tighter and i think that would just improve the whole experience yeah well, one issue they have is they have honestly just too many characters <laughs> like yeah yeah. You compare it to the first one, there's like what six crew members of the Nostromo or something like that. that. Matter, yeah. This has I don't know. I mean, the landing party was like fifteen people. Uh, well, the and, entire crew is fifteen named characters, and only like right. maybe three of them don't become relevant to the plot. So we need to remember and yeah. juggle like right around a dozen characters and know who they are, what they're doing, where they are and why at any given time. It's a lot more confusing yeah. and hard to follow yeah. of a movie than Prometheus was. That's for sure. It's also, but you still know that like 80% of these characters are going to die, yeah, which right. kind of makes that annoying. Also, they wanted to, they um, spent so much time up top, I think trying to introduce us to them. So we would care. Right. We don't care. Yeah, <laughs> which I get, but it's an alien movie. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. know. Like <laughs> you, need, you need to have some red shirts in there just to just to bite it to raise the stakes for the characters you do care about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, so. but I mean, like the movie, the the Promethe Jesus Christ, the Covenant part starts with um, James Franco burning alive in a sleep pod. So like it certainly <laughs> does. Finally. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with the movie starting with that. I didn't want them oh, to cut that too. scene. Like For sure. I am definitely okay with seeing James Franco get murdered on screen. That does not bother me in the slight. Yeah. Every movie should do that as far as I'm I concerned. was so in love with him when I was like 14. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to be a I used to have a big crush on James Franco. Um, yeah, a lot of people did. Yeah. Turns out he's a scumbag. Yep, of course. Who knew Dave Franco would be the more likable of the two? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I, the only movie I can think of off the top of my head that I've ever actually like been glad he was in it was the first of the new uh, Planet of the Apes movies. I don't remember which one. I think that was Dawn. I don't Rise, maybe. I don't remember which one. It was Dawn. Rise is, Rise is the next okay, one. Yes, so it was Dawn. And yeah, and it's like the movie is good, and it didn't bother me that he was there, and I thought he did a good job, and it worked. But like, it's still one of those things where I finished watching the movie, and I was like, I think I still would have rather seen someone else play that character than him, but it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's just kind uh, of a scumbag. And he looks like it, too. He does. But, you know. He dies in this movie. <laughs> right away. Yeah, right away. Yeah. What right away. Right. Oh, God. It's funny because I, like, whoever I was watching, my roommate I was watching with, she's like, you know, that's James Franco burning alive in that sleep <laughs> chamber right now. I'm like, really? Like, I don't recognize him at all. And then, of course, you see, like, the video message right. of him later. Do, do you think he um, just came to work with Danny McBride one day? And they were like, I don't know. Sure, you can be in the pod. Yeah. Get in the pod, Jay. <laughs> yeah. And then I watched like this little bonus, like, I don't, I guess it's a promo video thing on the Blu ray. It's called The Last oh, Supper, yeah, the, which the pre, the sort of prologue to the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Where James Franco is like, oh, I'm sick. I'm going to sleep early. And I'm just like, <laughs> Why do they have that? Like, I was like thinking, I'm like, is this significant in any way? Like, yeah, shouldn't the rest of like, if he's contagious, shouldn't he have been quarantined a long time ago? They are not taking proper safety protocols on, on any of these fucking deep space missions. That med bay scene, that first God. med bay scene, intense. That whole, it's rough. That whole like monster piece, I'll call it. Like from the moment the infection starts hitting, um, who is it? It's uh. Ledward is that guy. And then, yeah, cigarette guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, Ledward, and then he's with Corinne, who is Orem's wife. Yes. 
Right. She's the biologist. Yes. And then I believe the third person that's there with them is Ferris, who is, I believe, Tennessee. Ferris, Tennessee's wife. wife. Yeah, she's she piloted the lander. And then um, Hallett is uh, Lope's husband, security lead Lope. We read a lot about him in the uh, Origins novel. So Lope and Hallett okay. are a couple, and Hallett's the one who sniffs the mushroom and gets infected while they're Which exploring also, the juggernaut. They don't tell anyone either. Yeah. That's the thing that bothers me too, especially if it's all couples. You think you'd at least tell your significant other, like, hey, I just sniffed some shit out of mushroom. Like, yeah. keep an eye out. Yeah. You can, <laughs> like, I mean, cigarette guy, you can kind of give a pass. Yeah. I don't think he really reacts to it. It just kind of goes in his ear, right? Yeah. He's, yeah. But, but he deserves it for smoking. Am I right, kids? Hell yeah. That's Steven right. Spielberg style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll hit my vape to that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But yeah, that whole scene, though, like, it's starting to get dark. They're trying to get back to the lander, both groups. That was an incredible, like, set piece for me. Like, that was really scary. Um, yes. <laughs> we see, like, that we, we meet a brand new, like, form of alien that we haven't seen before. They call it the Neomorph, this little white dude that just tears out of the back of the man. But, so, okay, is it a, bl- is the blood burster? That's what they I... call the the small form of these guys i believe okay yeah that's what i thought i tried to do some um xenopedia ing nice. but i just got really annoyed <laughs> so i didn't learn every all of the terms but yeah blood burster to neo more we're generally <laughs> not concerned about it um yeah, <laughs> although i will never forget hammer peed from the uh hammer peed i wrote that down yeah. too i wrote that down that's the that's the stupid snake thing from prometheus yeah, right is, yeah. well i say stupid it's stupid that they fuck with it's it it's stupid that they the, fuck with correct it. yeah the yeah. hammer peed itself is fine yeah. yeah just like again why is everyone so dumb this is your job <laughs> it's your job to go into space like right come on keep your helmets on wear gloves you know, and maybe if you're smoking, don't just litter in our brand new potential planet. That's true. They're right? like, ah, finally, we landed on a new planet that we haven't ruined yet. <laughs> Better get started. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like we got a lot of time to make up for. <laughs> but that whole set piece was just incredible. It, probably my, one of my favorite scenes in any of the Alien movies. I mean, just like, and 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 you learn a lot about the characters in that too, like um, with... Uh, Ferris when she's she you know she's like she put your gloves on put your gloves on don't touch anything and she goes to rip his shirt off and the blood just like explodes out of his back and hits her in the face and you just see her like suddenly absolutely fucking terrified and just has no yeah. idea what to do like it felt very she... real it's I mean it sucks but it felt extremely real like really captured the terror of what that would be like for me you know that's true if, like and then she just like loses it yeah. like i feel like from there like she never regains her composure oh. like at all which makes sense but yeah it was, it was like truly damn. terrifying and then i mean just the whole yeah just the whole piece i liked yeah that scene is easily and by a wide margin, my favorite scene in the movie, even though there's a whole bunch of stuff later on where we see a fucking xenomorph right there, full on screen, like wandering yeah. around. This scene in the med bay was my favorite scene in the movie because I found it one of the best edited scenes I've like ever seen in oh, a yeah. horror movie because the editing is what made it so tense because like she rips off Ledsward's shirt yeah. and there's like the blood coming out of the spots on his back and she freaks out and runs away into like the not the bridge but like the front of the lander and then like it cuts yeah. between uh not ferris but uh corinne and ledward there in the room and ledward starts having like the seizure and then it cuts to ferris and she's mm. getting on the comm and then it cuts back to the covenant and tennessee's like receiving ferris's message and he's starting to freak out and then it cuts to like yeah. the other expedition group making their way back to the lander and it's like we know something bad and is gonna happen sick. and since we've already seen an alien movie not only do we know something bad is going to happen, but we know what that something is. But like they just keep on right. dragging it yeah. out by editing and cutting between all of these various different things to just prolong 
on like what happens yeah. what like what the thing we know is going to happen they just keep dragging it out and dragging it out and i just i kept on getting more and more and more amped up so when that thing finally shoots the fuck out of his back i was like oh hell yeah <laughs> God, it was disgusting too. It, like, it was I so gross. Game. I forgot how gross this movie was. <laughs> it is like, extreme. This one I don't know. <laughs> probably yeah. the gr- goriest of any of the alien movies. Like, really? Like, yeah, probably. I don't know. Maybe the AV. Yeah. Maybe AVP two. It's got some. It's got some schlocky gore in it, but like, <laughs> not as effective as this. I don't know. Yeah, this was like I was like, oh god, like I don't know, especially when like ledward is like convulsing yeah that was awful i was um, eating cheese fries while watching it too and it was <laughs> not a good idea <laughs> cheese fries yeah what was i doing while i watched this movie i don't remember um but yeah that was um and then when what's her name corinne yeah. who's in the med bay with him yeah. corinne when she's like freaking out i felt that too because yes. i'm like that is exactly what i would be she's doing in this trapped situation. in the room and she's just like let me out and like ferris is like no i can't we have to keep the the virus contained like and then it gets out anyway just, yeah yeah, yeah. And it just smashes through the window dude and <laughs> i know it happens so fast like you don't even get to think like oh maybe it won't smash through the no, window like, like, i'm out of here and then and then the whole ship blows and up. ferris just starts shooting like crazy all over the place and blows up the whole lander and then you see her coming down the ramp, like burning. And falling. That was really I, unnecessary. I love <laughs> that shot so much because there was no reason for it at all, other than for ju- the movie to just twist that fucking knife like further and deeper in. Like there was yeah. no reason to show that, and they did that just to make you upset. It was it ruled so much. They did it because yeah. like Daniel's just lost her husband to a fire in the med pod right or in the med pod in the sleep pod mm-hmm. and Oren was kind of like calloused about all of that taking over right that's true so now Oren's watching his wife burn to death and daniels is there with him when it happens and like i think that that's why they did it like mm. like this is what you get god boy you know god boy. i mean he certainly does seem to have like a turn of personality after that scene like after that moment happens yeah. he's a lot more like chill and calm and reserved for the rest of the movie after that so yeah probably that probably is the reason it's in there (laughs) yeah i mean like i think you could have done that even without seeing her fucking running around like that yeah Yeah, i think they they just did that like to to dial up to make orin directly see it i think yeah that's true yeah um or sorry orum with an m pardon me Orum. that's such a strange name yeah but yeah that part is i think that's like the scariest part of the movie well it is. and that low rumble in the score like the the sound design was just and the sun's yeah. going down the whole time and it's like finally dark by the time the ship explodes yeah. yeah the color grading of when it's daytime is very interesting too like as soon as they land on the planet and like the saturation is really weird and gray yeah just like oh that's i like to me that's extremely noticeable and then you see it again at the end when she's like fighting the xenomorph like when they're still in the atmosphere oh yeah um, but it really makes that green and all the you know moss like really pop yeah it's nice and then i like when they're fighting the big neomorphs and like you're just seeing it through like flashlights yeah um, mm-hmm. that was cool that yeah. felt very video gamey in the to me <laughs> Yeah, that scene fucking ruled. I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah love that whole, love that whole section mm-hmm. up until David shoots his flare. And David's wearing, he's like fucking, <laughs> like talk about your teenage boy. He's like cosplaying in like a hooded cloak. Like he, it's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> he has like the he's long, just, like elven ranger hair and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like, this is what I look like now. It's not a phase, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, you know that if um Wayland had seen him with that, he'd be like You're grounded. He'd be like Yeah, he's like, What kind of punk shit is this boy? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely the vibe I was getting. Yeah, it's really weird that they're designed to like have their hair be able to grow. Like, why? Why does? Oh the, yeah. Why is their hair capable of growing? Like, what purpose does that even serve? I guess it makes them more real. I guess. Yeah, if you get a bad haircut and then 
you want to be able to grow it out again. Yeah. Or like, maybe it doesn't grow like, like natural. Maybe he has to like twist his ear or something and the hair yeah. like just it immediately grew long. He right? has like a little dial on the back of his neck. And when he spins it one way, it goes out, spins it the <laughs> other way. It sucks back in, you know, but he still has to cut it. He can't twist it back. Okay, you guys are joking about this, but there is a Dora the Explorer <laughs> doll that does this. Neil, do you know what I'm talking about? I think that I was probably thinking about that, yeah. <laughs> the Dora the Ex I think it's from the movie where she becomes a princess, and by becoming a princess, her hair just magically grows. And so they made a doll of that. <laughs> and the doll has like a big, con I think it's got like one of those conical princess hats. Okay. And I think that's where the hair <laughs> goes the hair when you're not in. using it. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So David's got um, one of those. Yeah, he's yeah. the Dora the Explorer. I guess, you know, it's the future. So they, <laughs> I, I'm just going to assume that that doll exists in the alien universe as like some sort of artifact. I mean, we have, we've seen uh, nothing to disprove that. So we might as well assume it's canon. <laughs> it's canon. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just looked up the doll again. She is wearing a cone-shaped hat. So <laughs> I was right. Anyway. <laughs> this is very relevant yeah and then when he's like cutting his hair and it's in the shield so it's kind of like oh yeah warped looking i'm like i don't know it's like very like everything that david does have some sort of has some sort of weird metaphorical resonance <laughs> sure <laughs> which is like again like kind of annoying but also to me i'm just like oh i like love i love this i love the drama i watch a lot of period dramas i like watching romantic films i just saw in the mood for love for the first time a couple weeks ago okay. and it's like one of my favorite movies now but um so i think having that element in like an alien movie for me is like adding a lot to it it really works yeah I, it's working I for me because alien is very much like i mean a lot of horror is very much about like the body and like <laughs> yeah bodily autonomy and the self and like it's very psychological so this, again, it makes it feel a little more sophomoric by bringing it so much to the surface. But mm -hmm. I think it also makes me think about it more, which makes the movie more interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, what did you uh, think of the uh, scene where they find the crashed juggernaut and they find sort of Elizabeth Shaw's like flight badge and the photo of her and Holloway in the sleep pod and everything? Mm. Like... Uh, I think it's fine. Like <laughs> it's, it's really all aside from her body, like laying in David's lap. Like that's the only like real connection we get to the Prometheus, right? And to Shaw. Yeah, well, I mean, other it's than the cool. Fact that I mean, David shows up, but well, uh, David's his own thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, we got to take the David element. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, a fair point. Fair well, point. I was. But... <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about how they like work, how those ships like record everything, which right. I think you guys brought up when you talked about Prometheus. Yeah. And I give that a little bit of, pa of a pass too, because like, I don't know, I recently stayed with my uncle who has like a smart home yeah. and like just like has cameras recording like all of the downstairs rooms at all times for like security mm -hmm. purposes, I think. So I'm just like, this is people that do just with their houses. So, right makes sense yeah. but um i think it was cute to have the little recording of her so the first time i watched this i thought it was like a trick i like that it was just a random signal i mean maybe david like turned yeah. it on i was a little confused about um, that too because i felt like he was luring them like they were making an allusion to the derelict and the, the yeah. first alien movie but they never really i guess you just have to come to your own conclusion with that because i don't think they ever directly addressed that no like probably because they didn't know yeah probably not. yeah they didn't know yeah true but um yeah because he kind of is like yeah it's like hard to experiment when you don't have like and like i don't know if he outright says or implies like when you don't have people to like put the xenomorphs in yeah so he does talk about how he wants people around to do the experiment stuff but i don't think that's enough for me to concretely say like oh he definitely meant for them to come right. or something like that or why they would have like missed that planet yeah. like when they were talking about doing skin that's the thing that i don't understand and i'm not trying to like plot hole ding but um yeah i don't i didn't understand that either like you know when they're like we didn't even know this planet was here how like why <laughs> my best guess but it doesn't make sense 
is like somehow the engineers have like shielded themselves from Earth technology because they've known about us for a long time. I mean, they put us here, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't, but then why could they suddenly like detect it? Like just because of that one transmission, suddenly it's on their radar? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's weird. There is an alternate explanation. Let's hear it. Um, since we have read the Prometheus Fire and Stone comics, right. we know that the pathogen has the ability to literally just naturally terraform planets. True. So if we want to take the comics into canonical consideration, then it is possible that the planet wasn't inhabitable. Well, I mean, I guess it had to have been because the engineers were living on it. Right. But uh, maybe they have some kind of physiology where, like, they can survive in Earth-like atmospheres, but they can also survive in atmospheres that aren't Earth-like, sure. maybe. I don't know. But, like, what I'm getting at is, like, when David showed up and dropped all that pathogen on everyone, maybe over the course of the 10 years, yeah. it converted that planet into something that was habitable by humans, maybe. I don't know. Like, I that's, believe that. That's not me using any evidence from the movie to point that out. That's me trying to invent connections sure. to other things we've already seen as a way to explain it. So, But, I, you know, if the movie doesn't explain it, they, if it, the movie it, doesn't yeah. explain it, then I think... Right. I always like to look at the movie as its own thing first. Yeah. But then I feel like if that's not doing it for you, that I then give myself permission to, like, be like... Okay, is there any like weird, like like fucking comic book that <laughs> like an answer to this? It should be in the movie, like, but it's not. Yeah. So let's let's look elsewhere. The whole and the whole premise of this show is to look at all of that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Why, by the way, in in this movie, they just describe the pathogen as infecting a host who then transmits it in another way, right? Yeah, like, pretty much. Oh, really? Not directly mutating the whoever comes in contact with it, but I guess maybe like makes them sick. Like we saw it make people sick in Prometheus. Yeah, but like then the pathogen is supposed to then pass it on in some other some other way. That's different than how we saw it in Fire and Stone, where it just mutated things, right? Well, the pathogen works differently in this movie um, than it even did in Prometheus, because like in Prometheus. Uh, somebody would like ingest the pathogen and then it would like create a xenomorph e type of creature inside of them that would en then burst out but like in this when david drives up and just carpet bombs the entire temple area most yeah. of the people that got hit by that pathogen <laughs> they just died yeah like this was weaponized in a way where it didn't infect them it just kills them like a normal biological agent and i was like this movie like decided the pathogen works differently than it does in literally the movie this is a sequel to so who the fuck knows you know yeah well it but it seems like it's always different like yeah it feels like there's no consistency yeah every time it shows up it can do different things yeah so what like <laughs> it's a little frustrating so part of me is like okay should i just be going with this but then like i feel like it would be more interesting if this was like a little bit more thought out just yeah. like like an actual system like i'm not even like again i'm not trying to plot hold ding or anything i just you think that, that is more I, mean... I think it's more compelling in this case to do that um because then it, it like i want to believe that this is a thing that can be like it studied and like changed and worked upon like how David does it. Right. But then like, if it's always different and there are no rules anyway, then like it's harder for me to buy into that. Like it can actually be studied. I mean, consistency would be nice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And this is like the warrior Kings orb. It's exactly like that, yes. Yeah. This is exactly like that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I'm interested to see in the future, like, Kenny, you and I have read the Marvel series, at least the first arc of that. They have hinted, they have shown that the pathogen exists in that universe. Like they've shown it, called it the fire of the Prometheus, right? Yep. Maybe we will get some actual consistency from the Marvel comic. You know how Disney really wants they love to. Consistency. They love consistency <laughs> over there. <laughs> they love it over being creative. Yeah. If nothing, <laughs> if nothing else, we're going to get hard answers on some of these things now that Disney owns the property. <sighs> 
Yeah. Okay, well now I don't want hard answers <laughs> when you put it like that. Like I'm just like getting like solo a Star Wars story like war right. flashback. You're gonna get answers to questions you didn't want to know the answers to. And thought had already been answered. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it. Like if every alien movie was just a different ship and crew encountering some number of xenomorphs, preferably less than five, and having to deal with that situation, I would watch every single one and love all of them. So like, I don't really need yeah. a lot of explanation about things. Like, I don't really need to know where the xenomorph comes from. I hope we never get a definitive answer on that, despite what this movie tries to do. Like, it's way scarier when you just don't have answers to some of these things, in my opinion. Yeah, I do. I would have preferred it if what David was making was like a, a just a new thing. Because right. I do think the idea of, yeah, like someone would have probably like tried to fuck with the genetics of these things at some point like i think that's a cool story to tell but i think it is disappointing where it's like and it ties back into the original where it's like i guess this is a prequel but yeah like you said neil and this is how i feel about star wars too where it's like i think these movies are just stronger if like maybe you have like maybe this and Prometheus are connected, but they don't necessarily have to connect back to the first alien movie. Yeah, totally. Or aliens or whatever. I think it would actually be stronger because it's like, yeah, this is like pretty far like before that or, you know, it's a it's space. Space yeah, is huge. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like things should not be connected to each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was that's a change i think that's a small change that i would make that i think would make this stronger if it's just like and then you get to design a new monster yeah. too well they got to do that in Which this too always... and i think that... that's true when he makes it t-pose or whatever <laughs> <laughs> i love that part the little, the little, like, the little uh... chest pusher dude like yeah, he's, he's like, like a little mind guy <laughs> he's not himself. i always laugh at that part and the music during that was kind of like happy music almost like oh it's his son and i'm like i don't know yeah. i like <laughs> i know that's how david feels but once again he's crazy he's a crazy man yeah but that, so... that little guy was kind of cute <laughs> yeah just, yeah it is little like, tiny oh. and he's like fully little, developed on like the xenomorph yeah, little man he sees a little yeah. jaw inside his mouth and everything i was like you know what kind of want one of those as a little pet right like if it stayed that small if it was like a turtle that just kind of stays the size of the environment you raise it in right yeah he's just like a little like yeah. foot tall xenomorph just like tap dancing around i was like hey check that little guy out he's <laughs> kind of cool. i love it's him. like the way that monkeys are cute <laughs> <laughs> yeah but they'll also rip your face off if you yeah if you it's look kind of wrong. fucked up it's kind of fucked up but you could put a diaper on it like i don't know people just <laughs> people like having little guys around uh yeah. see that would be my alien that's my alien movie i'm gonna write is is, is cute aliens like keeping it as a pet and it's but it's like a little rascal and keeps like eating your cats right yeah i guess that's fucking like stranger things season two uh, that's something. literally uh, the reference i was going to make yes. <laughs> yeah i thought i got there i <laughs> i've only seen well, season one. Oh, i don't have netflix anymore and I haven't missed yeah. it. I mean, I, Stranger Things is good, but, you know. Oh, yeah. People love it. Yeah. I I think that the second and third seasons are pretty bad. And then I've seen two episodes of the most recent season, which I do like. But those were like the last two episodes, <laughs> <laughs> which I love watching finales out of context. So you just watch the end without watching the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched it with my roommate. So she was like, That's okay. Chaos there's like this thing and it's doing this and you know this is the b plot and this is what 11 is doing and so i was i, I basically knew what was going on it's, it's just when a new character walked on screen i'd have to be like okay which one is this <laughs> but you know steve was there my favorite everybody's favorite and... mortal kombat character steve correct <laughs> dude steve dlc for mortal kombat would be so good <laughs> actually i know a lot of people will be pissed off about that because it's like normie shit to like put stranger <laughs> things in it but like do it for the girlies Norm normie <laughs> shit. It, it i mean stranger things is normie but it's good i like it <laughs> like 
<laughs> so I'm going to be a zoomer for a second. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, that was it. I'm okay. done. <laughs> all right. So Kenny, you got anything else to say about this? I know there's a ton to say about the whole thing, but I know that you took a lot of notes. Oh yeah. There's, there's so much stuff. I, yeah, I took way, way more notes than I need to do. Um, <laughs> Well, you're well prepared. We there is going to be a test at the end of this, so good. It's, gotcha. It is open note, so you but, mentioned that yeah. scene earlier where they find Shaw's dog tags and then the yes. picture of her and Holloway together. Yeah, and like I was watching this movie, I was into it. I was like in the headspace that this movie needed me to be in, and then when I saw that, I out loud went oh fuck that's right holloway forgot about that fucking guy god damn it guy, and then got really pissed sucks. off for like five <laughs> seconds that guy. God, that guy sucks. i had completely fucking forgotten about him and then i got reminded of him and i was like oh yeah shit that guy um jade if you haven't watched the prometheus deleted scenes there is he is even worse in the deleted scenes than he was in the movie really what does he do? i guess i could just listen to y'all's episode i didn't yeah. get to that one but no like he gets like straight up belligerent and abusive towards shaw in a cut scene. oh like, yeah he, he gets fuck? really he gets really drunk and belligerent and tries to force himself on her yeah oh god well i'm glad they took that out of the movie yeah that it's not great complete. also i kind of hate i would hate i hate that happens with him and then also david's thing with her yeah it's like forcibly impregnating her until she dies um yeah. so i don't love that i mean like it's fine like aliens like it has like a lot of sexual assault themes but yeah. um that's the horror aspect i guess yeah man it's uh yeah it's yeah um anyway kenny <laughs> what other things did you want to talk about <laughs> oh um didn't mean to interrupt i I actually had, um, I even had in my notes, I wrote down, make sure to mention at this point, my big theory boys. I oh, shit. Big theory Ooh. boys. Theory big, boys. Big, 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 big theory boys. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. You know how uh, during that scene where uh, David and Walter are talking to each other and yes. uh, Walter gets David to admit that david killed the engineers on purpose so he could like experiment on them yeah because his whole thing is that he like hates humans and wants to kill all of them and doesn't think they deserve to continue to survive yes well mm -hmm. my big theory boys is that you've got the david and the walter models and uh, -huh. uh they're they exist in the early 2100s and then over the course of time, that model and that style and that like humanoid robot will get further and further refined over the next several hundred years. Okay. And so by the time we get to the early 3000s, that particular model of synth will have finally evolved into the apex platonic ideal of humanoid robots. One bender bending Rodriguez <laughs> because David explicitly states that he wants to kill all humans. Okay. <laughs> You know it's canon. <laughs> it's canon. It's canon now. <laughs> How is it canon? I, How is that your response? It's a bulletproof theory that I mean, can you poke any holes in this? I mean, try to prove uh, me wrong. David straight up says that he wants to kill all humans. That, that's proof positive. As there was far a straight. As there's a straight line from the David eight to Bender in Futurama. I mean, right. I haven't seen Futurama. I know who Bender is, okay. so I can't really fully even disagree. With Just you. trust us. <laughs> Just the idea of <laughs> Michael Fassbender turning into um, a robot voiced by who is it? Joe Dimaggio. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's it? There is a deleted yeah. scene in this where uh, Michael Fassbender. Where Joe Dimaggio shows up. Well, it's, it's Michael Fassbender. <laughs> In in his David role, saying "bite my shiny metal ass," so. <laughs> okay. right. I would love "bite my shiny metal ass." <laughs> and then Walter's like, "You want me to bite your shiny metal ass?" <laughs> oh, God. But they they went with the kissing scene instead. Yeah, yeah. You know they did. They <laughs> they they cut out that and put to put the kissing scene in instead. That's correct. He's like, I, what is he like? He's like. No one will ever love you as much as me. Something like that. Uh, I've had an ex say that to me before. Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. yeah, and then immediately after he says that is when he stabs Walter in the side of the <laughs> neck, and then Walter just yeah. kind of collapses to the floor. Yeah. With a and flu. then I got stabbed in the neck. Yep. Dear God. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, that was very... I felt that, honestly. Again, it might just be because I've literally had a person say that to me before, and I'm just like, Yowch. damn. Like... <laughs> That's rough. Damn, people really will say that and then be really shitty to you. Gross. Because <laughs> good people don't say that shit. Yeah. So <sighs> that was um. What did he say after that? And then he was like, "You're really you. You're like a huge disappointment or something like that." Yeah. He says, "I'm very disappointed in you." Yeah. 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 I was like, damn. And Walter comes back and beats the shit out of him. Yeah. With one hand. That scene ruled so much. I loved it. That it was, was great. such a good. I loved the robot fight yeah. scene when he's like. They're do- he's like doing both like kicking both legs at once yeah, it's like rule. a wrestler <laughs> like- yeah and what does walter say like they've made they've made some upgrades since you were around or something like that and i'm like hell yeah I, fucking robot I trash talk yes dude yeah yeah, <laughs> the I it is. yeah yeah that that uh that whole fight scene was awesome just tossing each other into bookshelves over and over again mostly <laughs> yeah that was great i forgot about that that was good that was a really good scene um I have other, I have a lot of notes about David and Walter. I'm just looking at them. I got another one here that I thought was uh, intriguing enough to at least write down. Uh, There's a scene after we find out uh, what happened to Shaw and like David, I think he's still in conversation with Walter at the time. And he's like talking about like how much he loved Shaw and how like he couldn't stand to see her die and was very upset how she needed to and everything. And I was like, this motherfucker is talking like a serial killer right now. Yeah. Which I suppose thinking about it now, I guess technically he is a serial killer, but like, yeah, it's hundred percent is. Yeah, it's like I I got that vibe real quick. He started talking about like how much he (laughs) missed her, and I was like, yeah, okay. And then he was like, and it really upset me how much she had to die, and I was like, wait, hold the fucking phone. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, I mean, he he prior to that he committed genocide. He's above serial killer. Or is that like splitting hairs? Well, I Are think we like splitting I, maybe a little. I don't know. <laughs> I think with David, it's like I mean, he, there's different levels to him. There's the intimate level, and then there's like the God thing. But then they are very like intertwined. Like having a God complex yeah. shows up in these huge like genocide events, but then also in how you relate to like the one other person that cares about you, um, which is scary and sad. <laughs> yeah. And then you get thrown into a bookshelf. And then Multiple you get thrown times. into a bookshelf by your brother that you by, kiss. By your twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> your baby twin brother. <laughs> yeah. I was also really disappointed to see uh, uh, Rosenthal get killed. She was the one who got her head bitten off by the yeah. neomorph inside the temple. Uh, because, <sighs> Jade, I don't know if you yeah, know dude. this or not. But like in the prequel book, she's like one of the main characters of the book. And then in the actual movie we spend now, so much time, with so her. much time. And then now she's mm. basically a glorified extra. She gets like two or three lines over the course of the entire movie and right. then just gets killed. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have had no idea. She, I thought, was the most forgettable character. <laughs> Maybe that's why Alan Dean Foster gave her so much like focus yeah. in the novel because yeah possibly she just she didn't have a lot like but like in the novel like her and lope are like they're like traveling around trying to find the people who are trying to sabotage the covenant min- mission so they're like batman oh. and robin the whole novel it's, that's very it's cool pretty fun i honestly. liked her in like, the um and the fear testing like prologue thing the fear testing prologue thing i don't know what that is <laughs> yeah i don't know what that is either yeah okay i'll explain it in a second <laughs> all right Okay. What were you saying, Kenny? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, it just of all of the characters that are in both the prequel novel and the movie, um, Lope and Rosenthal are yeah. definitively the main characters of it. Like over half the book is told yes. from their perspective. And then so to go from that to suddenly she has two lines and is killed and her name is only said on screen like once or twice ever over the course of the entire movie yeah. i was like i understand that like part of the setup for that is because the prequel novel was written 
after the movie it came out like six or seven months after the movie right. did and so like he was going like alan dean foster was like going back through and like you know backdating and like adding stuff that wasn't there before so yeah that probably is the reason he made her one of the main characters but like after getting to know this character and getting to like her going to the movie and then yeah. basically seeing her effectively almost not even exist she's barely there so much i was like uh, i would have liked to see more of her right. i got to like that character over the course of the book me too yeah same here i did feel like when she got killed like i did feel that because i remembered yeah. all that stuff from the novel so like it worked it works if you read the fucking 300 page <laughs> book also <laughs> you know but honestly it's not a very good book and that's yeah. a huge I mean, i felt yeah. nothing so. when she died so. <laughs> so um jade what's this fear thing this is one of the promotions oh the yeah so this was on the blu-ray kind of like the it was in the same section of the menu as the last supper thing but yeah. it was very interesting. I would, I recommend it. I thought it was the most interesting out of all of those. Okay. I watched, well, anyway, um, well, the Walter commercial was also interesting, but um, the fear, the fear thing, it's like an interview that they all had to go into. That's fun. For, even though this, it's weird, um, to be on the mission. So it's like, you see Tennessee, Daniels, Walter is there also for some reason. Sure. Um rosenthal and what's the name of the guy that has to become captain after james franco or, dies orin orim orim Sorry. i'm gonna do that every time orim. Or, yeah. orim okay um it's all them and basically it's like this robotic interview where they sh they're strapped into a chair with like the little electric yeah. reading stickers on their temples i forget what those are called i'm pretty um, sure that is what they're called and as far as i know okay <laughs> good um and it is basically like testing them to see like what they're afraid of and how scared they get where obviously with walter it's just like <laughs> i do not get scared i am here to help people and i have no sense of like, I am self programmed like, to self give hugs consensually yeah exactly yeah <laughs> he's just programmed to be just yeah. a cool guy but um and then you see uh Orum kind of being like a huge bitch the whole time it's like, okay well he keeps getting obviously really scared and then the robot is like how are you feeling and he's like really angry like when i get upset about something i just go straight to anger and i'm just like this is kind of but it's like he's obviously lying right which was interesting um and then Tennessee is like, I'm a damn good pilot. And I'm good in the sack. I, I ain't scared of nothing. Like, and then he does. And then he does get fucking scared. He gets scared most by like the pair. And they're, so this is the thing for me is that they're one of the phobias on there is like parasitophobia or whatever. Oh boy. Like obviously like parasite related shit. And they're like, forcibly they're basically like oculus rifting like these really scary images like directly onto their eyeballs and like oh, shit. seeing how they react that's like how the test goes while they're also strapped to like a lounge chair sort of <laughs> like a like a, they're strapped to like a lazy not really a lazy boy it's like a doctor chair um and they're all strapped in and they like are getting oculus rifted these really scary things and they're getting scared so but and then it cut it'll cut to the tech to like the other room where with the readings on the screen and it kind of goes through all the different things that they're testing for with all these different images and but obviously it puts a lot of emphasis on like parasite stuff um sure. yeah which is weird to me because i'm like do but at this point like no one knows is this just for the sake of the audience but it like keeps cutting back to this like one specific thing yeah it must be um yeah where it's like oh they're gonna have to deal with this because it's an alien movie <laughs> um and i thought found that a little hokey i think it would have been cool to see like other things they were afraid of not just like images of like you know like worms burrowing out of people's skin Gross. and stuff um i know and that's like in in that's in that thing in the clip tennessee is like at the end like is obviously really upset and the computer's like uh, on a on a scale of one to ten were you afraid <laughs> he's like <laughs> yes i was fucking afraid <laughs> like <laughs> which i think it's cool that again tennessee is the best character yeah. like he's very honest like at the beginning he's like oh i ain't gonna get scared and then at the end he's like yeah that was fucking scary yeah. like it, it was like 
He's like, you slice, you showed me a video of someone slicing open a foot with a bunch of <laughs> fucking worms falling out of it. Like, how am I supposed to feel? No, I'm happy and, and then, I love it. What do you? Yeah. And then Walter is not affected at all. Daniels is actually not affected at all, which I think is really interesting. interesting. She's like, it's setting her up as the main character, I guess. Yeah. Um, Cause she's just like nothing. She's like, can I get along with my job? I have something to do. Oh, like it's yeah. very much like that. And then um, Rosenthal is like fucking crying and is talking about how she feels like a failure and that like huh. all this shit. But then the computer is still like, yep, you're, you're still good to go on the spaceship though. It's not an issue for us. <laughs> I guess we just did this for no reason. Like, again, it feels very much like, like it's a, it's a cool little character like display of all these different characters, but um, it feels so much like it's just for the audience, which right. it's promotional material that makes sense. Um, but yeah, and then there's just a commercial for Walter, which is weirdly sensual okay. and off-putting. Oh. I'm like, I don't know if this would actually make me buy one of these <laughs> robots, but I don't, yeah, I mean, they did one of those. I probably couldn't afford it. They did a they did a commercial for David also, and in that one, they were very clearly like selling those to like companies and organizations as like mm. an addition to your workforce. I don't know that they're selling these dudes for like personal use, you know? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, like, I guess that's what it is. Maybe that's one of the upgrades that the Walter model got. <laughs> oh, maybe. The Walter one, it almost felt like a perfume commercial. Like it was very weird. Um, oh, maybe, like, maybe that was because they talk a lot about how like people didn't like the David. Mm. Made people uncomfortable. So maybe they're like, look, check it out. The softer side of androids, <laughs> right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So that that extra I didn't watch the bonus scenes, but I did watch that like promotional material. Nice. But yeah, that's just another thing that endeared me to Tennessee also though, yeah. because once again, he's one of the best characters in this uh, movie. I'm glad he doesn't die. Well, I guess he will. He he definitely will, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh Speaking of Tennessee being wacky and endearing to people, how about that good like 45 seconds where he just kept on calling everyone sugar tits over and over again? What was up with that? <laughs> he sure yeah. did. Yeah, boy. I mean, I don't love that. <laughs> right. But what did, but what did he... um, Ferris call him? What does his wife call him? Whiskey dick or something? I don't know. <laughs> Whiskey I think it was like sugar dick, I think. Right. Something like that. So that's, you know, they're a fun couple. They just, you know like to do that i guess it seems like he just has a good rapport with people right. which again like if i didn't really know this guy i don't know maybe he's just the sort of guy that can do that because he's actually really cool sure. that's more the vibe i got the first time i watched this movie i was like oh i'm not gonna like this guy because <laughs> but they like it, it's a thing like he calls people sugar tits and stuff but it's like he doesn't do anything else bad besides right. that like there's no worse behavior than that yeah other than that he's seen being like a really good guy yeah. he doesn't hit on anyone besides his wife yeah, he's clearly just crude right. and that's where it ends with him yeah you know? which i'm fine with <laughs> and it is like it's his it's his wife and it's it's upworth it's his flight crew like it's yeah. people that he knows and has worked with for a long time he's not doing it to like the colonists or like the rest of the crew either so you know yeah. I mean, it's just he gets a pass it's just how they I mean, it's just how they all talk to each other but they they keep it they know their own boundaries with it right mm -hmm. i'm always it's always a coin flip for me when danny mcbride is in a movie agreed like which which danny mcbride character is he playing this time you know yeah and he played the one i like in this one so <laughs> that's good yeah. have you seen um what's that show that he's in eastbound and down i have not I think that takes place in North Carolina. I don't know if it was actually filmed there. Is it in continuity with Alien Covenant, you think? You know, we should cover it on the podcast. <laughs> this is what he was doing before he came up into space. I'm descended from a long line of gym coaches. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see, actually, no. If child acting was, like, good, it would be cool to see, like, teenagers in an Alien movie. That would be cool. If it was good. So... As Kenny likes to remind everyone, they wrote a young adult alien novel. They certainly did. Damn. Called Alien Echo. Is it good? Eh, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. That was a long pause. <laughs> I have read it, and it's like, imagine the first 40% of a book that is just straight, like, YA teen romance, 
and then at the 40% mark, there is a hard cut when an alien shows up, and then the rest of the book after that is just everyone running from an alien while an alien murders people. I mean, Mm. sounds pretty perfect to me, honestly. I mean, I might check it out. (laughs) Yeah, we are going to be covering that on the show eventually, so... Oh shit! Yeah. I'll come back for the YA novel. Honestly, that would be pretty appropriate. If you want to, you yeah, absolutely sure. can. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm not gonna promise anything right now. That's fine. I, <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a ways off, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. You mean that's not top of the list? No. I mean, you haven't even gotten to the first movie yeah, yet. Yeah, we should. Like, what if we just did Alien Echo next? Like, fuck it. Fuck the listeners. Well, well, look. All right. It might not be top of the list, but I've mentioned it like four fucking times over the course of the show. Right. Just because it's always on my mind because it's just such a bizarre ass book. I'm going to get it. Yes. My next Audible credit's going towards that, so I'm prepared. We're building hype. A <laughs> uh, couple more things I want to talk about in this. I really want to talk a little, just briefly, about the xenomorph itself, or as they call it in this, the the protomorph, as it's been identified. Because mm-hmm. it's not quite the same as the one that we see in the, the later movies, right? Mm, it is not, no. It's less, like, mechanical, Oh yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, it it comes it ha- the face hugger for it first hatches out of a much larger egg that has a different shape than the traditional one we see, and then when the protomorph itself births, like busts out of the chest, it's already quadrupedal. It already just looks like a miniature little alien, and then it seems to mature to like full grown size in like two minutes, really like fast. immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Like a really, really fucking yeah. fast. That was yeah, that was a uh, interest an interesting choice. And then it uh it's not quite as like stalkery killery as the xenomorph. It's just like super aggressive, kind of stupid, just like runs in and starts tearing shit up instead yeah, of like sneaking around. It's more aggressive and less intelligent than a regular right. xenomorph. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got like some small like I noticeable design changes the head shapes a little different the teeth are different etc like stuff i missed completely the first time i watched it and probably every time i watched it up until this time um so this is a different creature than we see and the implication there i guess from the screenwriters who we haven't named i guess we'll go ahead and say jack paglin michael green wrote the story and john logan and dante harper wrote the screenplay finally giving credit to those guys an hour and 48 minutes into this thing. Uh, (laughs) Their intent was that this creature was something that had already been developed by the engineers and David was kind of recreating their work. But Ridley Scott kind of directed it and decided that the way it should be presented is, is as if this creature was completely, the xenomorph in general was completely of David's design, right? which is something they've kind of walked back in like expanded media since then. Like the idea that oh, David really? created the thing, which I'm kind of like cool with, you know, like I mostly because I don't want to actually know where the thing came from. I want to have, I want it to be this just terrifying entity out in space. Right. That like you could accidentally run into and it would just eat your entire ship full of people. Um, That's certainly a lot cooler than the alternative yeah but we already have the engineers yeah engineers i think are kind of like i kind of like them and i kind of hate them (laughs) that they exist (laughs) yeah i'm I'm the same um but it's the principle of the thing yeah like so jay do you know the the theory that the reason the engineers wanted to kill us is because jesus christ was an engineer (laughs) yeah i listened to that all right (laughs) um i think i think that's a really stupid theory (laughs) yeah so do i that's insane imagining jesus is like one of these big dudes (laughs) like right (laughs) yeah well that's the thing but like so but the timing is around that time yes i made that very clear (laughs) so that's so stupid because at that point it's like oh then what the fuck else would it be i don't know like right because before see i didn't notice the time so my theory in my head before i knew what the time period was supposed to be was that it was like industrialization or something like that or i mean that makes sense actually my actual theory was it was when we like invented the nuke or something like sure really really strong that they're just like oh they're like 
getting too strong or something or even like yeah, we when might, we invented we wipe them out now. when we invented space travel like i thought it would have been something like that cuz that would have been more i think to me thematically strong because it's the whole like humans creating androids and then oh, yeah. being suspicious of them because the androids can learn and get stronger and stuff and potentially like you know kill humans where with mm -hmm. humans it's like oh well maybe that happened with the engineers like the engineers could have gotten freaked out by like us having strong like a weapon that they you know, maybe they don't know how to make nukes or something right. like, you know, so I'm just looking at us, they're like, what the fuck is going on with this species? None of their weapons are black goo. Based. Yeah. Like, what are they even fucking doing? I don't like you that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no yeah. black goo. If that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that would have been way strong. Like then what it's Jesus was an engineer. Okay. What am I supposed to fucking do with <laughs> That's that? That's so fucking funny. <laughs> what Jesus I... was an engineer. It just sounds hilarious. It was, <laughs> was Muhammad also like, what's the implication? Now there is a bumper sticker. We should start telling like was Buddha an engineer <laughs> you know like it just uh, yeah it's uh I know that this is a very Christian heavy series so like I'm fine only looking at it through like a Christian lens but if you just think about that at all yeah. it's I know it, it that's probably why they ultimately didn't go forward with that you know yeah <laughs> but what a Thank Jesus they didn't, right? Thank the engineers they did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so stupid. Yeah. The other, like, last thing that I really want to dive into is the final scenes of the movie. Like, oh, yeah. you know, we've got the escape, right? The escape was very cool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they we learned in, uh, so another little bit of trivia for you, Jade. Yes. The reason there was only one lander on the alien, on the covenant is because they had to, uh, deploy their second lander to stop a kamikaze ship from crashing into the Covenant and destroying the entire colony mission in the novel. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> so they've just got the one lander. Um, so that like le that like cargo skiff that Tennessee ends up piloting down. That was also a very cool set piece for me. Mm, I do love that. Like, I love the crane. Yeah, that that ruled. I like that a lot. And, and the way the crane, I mean, they should have had me piloting it, I obviously. Know, but, I wouldn't have thrown it off balance. Yeah, but, you would have done a much better know. job. But, um, and honestly, if I were on this crew, <laughs> I would have been the first person murdered, by the way. Like, would you be sniffing I would have been the dude. I would have been the dude. I would have, like, tasted it <laughs> and just immediately exploded or something yeah. <laughs> like that i have no business being on a colonization expedition no that's fine you know it's not for everybody as we can see <laughs> these people were specially selected and they didn't even do a good job at all um yeah. i did think that when they're on top of that like having the crane fight um and this is a really basic observation, but I think the CGI for the alien looks really good. Like, yeah. I think the alien, yeah. like you, you, you'd think a broad daylight alien would look like shit, but no, it's no, nice. that was that was very cool. Seeing it in broad daylight too was awesome. That's not really something that we see. Ever yeah, and it could have this series. It could have looked really. Yeah, bad. that worked really well for me. Yeah, yeah. If it had been like Black Panther CG or something, it would have looked really <laughs> stupid. But. um they did a good job with it. It looks like they took their time with the lighting and everything. Maybe that's yeah. why the color grading is like that outside too. <laughs> They're like, it makes, yeah. we want to make this really sense. nice and even for the alien. Good, good contrast off of that xenomorph. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the protomorph, whatever. Shut up, internet. No, I... <laughs> um, so I was pranked the first time I saw the movie with the Walter Davis. No, switcheroo. are you serious? I thought it was so, I thought it was very. Oh, it was telegraphed yeah. like crazy. Yeah. But it was so telegraphed that I thought they want me to think there's going to be a switcheroo. Mm. But there's not going to be. Ultimately, we're going to find out that it is, in fact, Walter on the Covenant. Like, I wanted to, maybe I just really wanted to believe that. Yeah. So I just let myself believe it until the very end of the movie, you know? You convinced yourself. <laughs> but the whole scene on the Covenant with the, the alien bursting out of Lope and everything, and David as Walter, like, he's fully committed to being Walter even when people aren't looking at him, like he shows relief when they finally defeat the monster and everything. Like, mm -hmm. like he seems tense when things aren't going well at first. Like they really sell sold me that no, no, don't worry. It's actually Walter. Right. Like, yeah. So I'm, maybe I'm dumb. 
right? But I'm okay with that, you know? <laughs> like, it's fine. I feel like you're losing it a little bit, Neil. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> the betrayal. Again, it's just another layer of David betrayal where I'm just like, you yeah. did it again, you bitch. <laughs> motherfucker, yeah. you motherfucker, David. But that whole, like, it's like we got a mini alien movie, like original alien remake at the end of this movie, right? Mm. Like a like a 20 minute section that is resolved very quickly. But I was really psyched just to see that in the movie, just to have this like final piece. Like the speed run. Where, <laughs> yeah, where a xenomorph has gotten on board of the Covenant and is murdering the remaining crew and our our plucky protagonists have to blow it out of an airlock. I think it was done really well. It did feel a little rushed, but I was like grateful that it was there, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I really liked that segment too. I thought it was really cool and fun. Yeah. I like it. It's, it also does a good job of deflecting away from like, wait, is that David or Walter also? Because yeah. it's like after the David Walter fight, like, cause you don't see the end of the fight. That's like the no. only thing I'm thinking about is like, and I yes. and the movie goes on longer than I expect because I so because I expected the twist. I expected that to just like happen. And I think that doing the speed run alien like plot at the very end kind of distracts you from it. Yeah. And then again, it like gives David these opportunities to kind of prove himself as an ally so it's like it's th that scene is doing a lot um and then also you know you get to the very end and there's that ugh, just like horrible like just like the biggest God. like pit in my stomach like when daniels realizes because i'm like well maybe she will you know she won't have to know right but then you have to like live through that betrayal through her it's really right really well done honestly like yeah it's like a heartbreaking and scary mm -hmm. just the, like she's trapped in the sleep pod mm -hmm. she's like banging on the pod but then she just gets put to sleep by the thing right oh, yeah. like she can't fight it so it's like even There's if no way out for her even if you, you know? do predict the twist which i did you still have to like watch the crew member you know like i think they did a good job of like well if you do predict the twist it's still gonna like gut punch you because you have to watch like daniel's like yeah be in this fucking hopeless situation yeah so yeah good job good job writers yeah <laughs> yeah that entire sequence i thought had a lot of stuff that i thought worked really well like there is a shot where tennessee and daniel's are like you know when they're having uh well quote unquote walter like strategically open and close all the doors while they're running through the ship to try to like herd the alien in a specific direction there's yeah. like this completely unnecessary insert shot where it's like a close-up like almost profile of david while he's like watching them on the monitor and like he sees yeah. the alien scramble by and then he just kind of stares at the screen and then starts to like suspiciously smirk to himself and the yeah like, that's the big tell in there for no reason at all but once it happens i was like I mean, oh that's obviously david like the moment i saw that i was like oh walter would not respond like that that is clearly david i don't think that scene's in my cut of the movie because i don't remember that at all i don't like, so it, I... Yeah, I must have watched a different version than you guys. <laughs> I, I watched I watched the Walter cut. <laughs> but Neil, I didn't oh, okay. I didn't realize that the first time I watched it. I noticed that for the first time on today's rewatch because yeah. I remember specifically the first time I watched it, I called it, but that was just me being like, well, I didn't see the end of the fight and you know, that would right. make it more of like a horror movie ending. So I feel like that's just what they're yeah. going to do. But I didn't notice the fucking smirk and then I noticed it this time and I was like, oh well now i don't feel so smart about it <laughs> but then again they have several scenes after that where he does do like helpful things so right. it's kind of mixed signals but yeah i didn't notice the smirk the first time i watched it i think it is kind of fast um i don't know but well, i guess it's a movie I guess i'm just gonna have to watch the whole movie again tonight to see if <laughs> the i see whole it thing. <laughs> not yeah. just the end part i, no, do... Gotta start. I can't do it gotta I... start from the beginning <laughs> i do think it makes sense that that part is rushed too just like because I'm like, yeah, like you would want to take care of that pretty quickly. Like, <laughs> yeah, if it's already. I mean, they were on it. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, exactly. It felt it felt natural. This was the it was the most efficient and like successful attempt at dealing with a xenomorph on a ship out of any of these movies. Mm -hmm. Like 
they're just like right away like boom we get we know what to do we're gonna trap it in these tunnels and open the airlock like yeah yeah there's there are several uh entries in the alien franchise like even the first one where it ends with oh all the problems have been solved and then right before the movie is about to end they open a door and go oh shit there is an alien in the ship that i was about to use to leave it happens in this it happens in the original movie it technically sort of happens in prometheus it spoiler alert happens in isolation there are like several entries in the franchise where right as the thing is about to end they discover that oh wait a minute there is one in the ship with us when otherwise the movie would be ending suddenly there's like a fourth act that comes out of nowhere yeah yeah that's true it is very formulaic (laughs) but this is the only alien movie as far as i know with a sexy shower scene that turns into like a horrible slasher moment i did love that scene i felt so bad that was weird i was like yeah i was watching it and i was like huh it's really weird to suddenly just have nudity in an alien movie for like no reason at all that's true and i didn't even get to see michael fassman spencer's ass (laughs) right you think that would have happened before seeing this random pilot's boob but that is in the walter cut the The walter's (laughs) ass cut (laughs) it's right now it's just uh, a script i'm writing but i'm hoping to get it produced Uh, (laughs) (laughs) give walter Um, the steamy scenes he deserves yeah like i mean i liked i don't know like i like just the idea of like after this is over, I think you would want to have sex. Like to me, I'm sure. just like, but yeah, it is. The nudity was kind of like, I was like, Oh, I didn't realize this movie had that kind of rating. It's just like, my, it's a little distracting. Yeah. I definitely didn't remember it happening the first time I watched it. That's for sure. No, cause it doesn't matter. I feel like. Uh, I remember yeah. part of it being shown in the trailer. So like, I remembered it being there, but all I could think was like, I feel like they're like, you know how like on if you're like on a submarine or a naval vessel you you take like a 30 second shower like they are wasting a lot of resources on this on there's a lot of water running down that drain right yeah but there's two of them (laughs) but still like shut the water off soap up turn the water back on rinse turn it off like that's what you're supposed to do that's right well there's a lot less crew members now too so that's true so so they're just like we got enough we're using 13 people's worth of water in this shower (laughs) yeah Yeah. exactly yeah that's a ding that's a (laughs) that's a red card well they get punished for it that's what they're doing wrong instead of like the guy smoking the cigarette they're just wasting water (laughs) yes and that's why they get killed right one guy gets killed for smoking they get killed for wasting water um and why do the other people get killed uh looking at yourself in the mirror uh, vanity yeah. <laughs> vanity absolutely um Oren gets killed for uh Be- trusting a robot being yeah which is so which is stupid <laughs> trusting a robot is a sin it's true it's one of the ten commandments <laughs> yeah. don't trust a robot <laughs> yeah the thing with him being like a man of faith it's like Okay, I guess it's, like, that makes sense that he... Well, but that's the thing. It's, like, okay, like, he's, like, I've seen the devil before. But then right. he also, like, gets tricked by the devil, so... I'm gonna follow you into your creepy basement now after seeing all of your weird experiments. Yeah, look at the eggs with David. is like, oh, don't worry, it's perfectly safe. And then it's, like, he, 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 like, to himself. He's, like, well, if you said so, it must be safe. You wouldn't lie to me, David. <laughs> Like right. cuts to David crossing his fingers behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gonna be in my cut. That's can we put that in the movie? Yeah, I'll put that in the Walter cut. Yeah, can can we put that in the Walter cut, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, that was really stu- again. Like the this and Prometheus just relies so hard on people being stupid. It kind of yeah, it's some kind of statement, I guess, about just like the hubris of humankind or something i don't really know i guess but you think you see this whole city full of like dead people and be like yeah mummified maybe you know, humanoids. maybe i should <laughs> think about my own mortality a little more. i think everyone's thinking about the mortality at the very least break out the n95s right yeah that's true like... <laughs> that would you know but you, i guess you kind of cover your ears too sure <laughs> 
that's the tricky thing at least covid can't go in through your ears i right, think as far as we know yeah that's true i mean i'm not a doctor i have no idea but <laughs> i feel like someone would have told me about that by now <laughs> So, do, did we do it? Do you think we've uh, thoroughly discussed Alien Covenant? I have one last thing. This one Let's... last thing, and then I think otherwise I'm going to be done. All right. Let's hear it. Got a little quiz for you guys. Uh-oh. Ooh. Can the two of you, working together, oh, name <laughs> all 15 crew members on the Covenant? Oh, no. 15? That's so many people. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I all can... 15 of the named main characters. Okay, what's James Franco's name? Do you know, Neil? Um, <sighs> so is that already one person? Brand, Brand, <laughs> James Franco, because it was Branson, but they wrote Brandon in the book, right? It's something like that. Does he count? Yes, it's Branson. Branson. That, okay. that, that is one ding. Yes, correct. Okay. Oran. Right. Oran. Yeah, Oram. Oram. Tennessee. Tennessee. Daniels. Oram. Tennessee. Daniels. All right, I'm marking them off as you go. Okay. All Rosenthal. Right. Rosenthal. Who's the guy whose face gets melted? Rosenthal. Uh, Lope. That's that's Lope. Lope. He's the guy from the novel. I know that. I one did like too. him. I didn't talk Lope. about him all right. at all. Uh, yeah, Hallett, his husband. Beard guy. No. Right. Yeah. Oh, um, who's the guy smoking the cigarette? Um, Led. That's Ledward. Ledward. That's the other guy who got sick. Um, um, Tennessee's wife. Worth, Ledward. Oh, Tennessee's wife. Tennessee's wife. Um, Ferris. 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 And right. then. And you mentioned Upworth. I gave you that. Okay, we got Upworth. Uh, then we've got Walter. <laughs> Orem's Orem's wife. The the one the oh. biologist. Oh, um, Corin. Jade or... said Walter, and he is a Walter. member of the crew. So yes, Walter as well. Kareen. Walter, of course. Kareen, is that her name? Yeah, I think so. Kareen. Yes, Corin. Okay. Yeah. Um, what yep. is the hot navigator pilot guy who gets killed in the mouth? Upworth's. Uh, uh, Upworth's. Oh, that's his name. Husband. Uh, okay. No, Upworth's the Upworth's the lady. I don't know. Is it? I don't know his name. Is it Rick? No. <laughs> It's not like Rick or Nick. I thought it was. <laughs> Close enough. I'll give it to you. His name is Ricks with an S. Ricks. Oh, okay. Okay. That was kind of clutch with me. You've got two um, more. You've got um, two more. The two least seen crew members. Who are? What are their names? Do either of you remember? I don't. Okay. Okay. There's no way. I'm, I'm not. Let me think. All right. They were probably main characters in the so book too, weren't they? They were there. I assume that these are like people with guns that get killed quickly. Um, I got it. All right. Well, uh, then yeah, congratulations to the two of you. Between the two of you, uh, you got 13 out of the 15 crew members. The two you nice. were forgetting was that. the two you were forgetting was uh, Cole, the guy that got killed when uh, during like when Lope got attacked by the face hugger. Like Cole was the guy that cut oh. the face hugger off of Lope. Oh, he gets killed. The guy who was up with Lope on the roof. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then uh, the last character that you missed, he was the guy uh, during the fight with the first Neomorph when they were like shooting him and had like the yellow yeah. or the green uh, laser sights. His face got torn uh, open by the there tail. There was one character where, yeah, during like an insert shot, like a tail comes by and like rips the dude's jaw off and he dies. Yeah. Uh, that character's name was Anchor. Okay. Anchor. No way I would have ever gotten those. Okay. Interesting. A N K O R. And yeah, that's all 15 crew members. Like I said, you guys got 13 out of 15, which ain't bad. So that's a B plus, which is what yeah, I take aimed it. for yeah. in college. So oh, yeah. um, we don't work too hard, right? I, exactly. I, I yeah. did remember <laughs> that. I did remember the guy whose jaw got ripped off by the tail because I love that. I love that kill. Yeah. I think that's a great kill. I love how fast it is. That was, yeah. And that I, was crazy. I knew that was one of the guys we were missing, but I obviously would have never gotten that name. <laughs> and then Cole was, yeah, Cole's the one who cut the face hugger off of. Lope. I forgot the, about that guy entirely. Then the big, the big Xenomorph and then, yeah, killed the, him. The protomorph just like showed up and just kills the guy. Yeah, that was him. Yeah, mm. but I just want, but just reminded me that scene when they're running out of the when the survivors are running out of the building to the landing ship, mm -hmm. like to the the skiff or whatever. 
and you just see like the alien you see the xenomorph like head like come up from the doorway and walk like over the shoulder yeah as they're running away that was yeah. a sick fucking scene i was like oh shit yeah, they're extremely fucked. badass like, <laughs> agreed. agreed that was cool like yeah yeah i did like um when the when the little landing ship with the med bay was exploding, how you see the little fucking oh, you see him scary. You see him scary way. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I remember while I'm again, that's like I think that's one of the I think that might be like the best a- action or like horror yeah. scene in this movie. Like, because yeah, I'm yeah. watching it explode and I'm like, well, at least it blew up that thing. And then I see you see it and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course it didn't die. I don't. And then. It's like one of the many scenes where I like chastised myself for thinking that something better would happen, <laughs> um, which I think is a good thing for a movie to do. Like, I like that it kind of plays with your emotions. I also like when those little guys, those little neomorphs mm-hmm. come back to attack the party. They've grown, but they haven't grown full size yet. Yeah. I thought that was a nice touch. They still too. grow so fast. But they're still like huge. They're still like they're still- human size and they're not even full grown yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're like they're like like teenage size. They're not. They're on the cusp of yeah. puberty. You know, <laughs> they're just figuring themselves out, yeah. <laughs> deciding what their place in the world is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I did like those designs too. I, I liked all the monster designs in this. I think the updates to the xenomorph were cool. I think that those neomorphs looked fucking terrifying and gross yeah. and scary. The bloodbursters yeah. are scary. I mean, I love a chestburster. Yes so like who doesn't (laughs) yeah ladies (laughs) um (laughs) but yeah i mean they had like the face crab thing too or face hugger yeah which is like a classic like i think it is kind of cool how it's like this is just like a very it's like variations and then my favorite variation is probably just like small t posing like (laughs) like that thing was yeah. xenomorph guy. That was the Ear that roll. was the most iconic new xenomorph Absolutely. design. I think it's just the same thing, but it's like a a child like pocket size. Yeah, yeah. Um, like an action figure come to life. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so great. I oh, this is just really quick. Another scene I wanted to talk about. I know we didn't want to do like a play by play of everything, but I <laughs> did really like the part where David is like talking about them, like it's like if you breathe on a horse's nostrils, it will trust yeah. you forever. And then Orm just like shoots it and you immediately, <laughs> away. you immediately see him be like, no, it trusted me. Where I'm just it like, trusted me. Oh, David is so <laughs> fucked. Like, but like, yeah. he's also going through like legit emotions, which again, it's- Rosenthal's head's floating in the water, like two feet away. Yeah. And he's like, how could, how dare you shoot my monster? Yeah. I think yeah. it was interesting how it's like, Oh, he really does see the monsters. Like he feels close to them than he does to people. Cause the monsters are his kids and people right. are his dad and fuck my dad. I hate him. What did my dad ever do for me? <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with my kids and my kids are going to kill my dad. Um, <laughs> that's like David's whole thing. So sure. Yeah. yeah that was, I liked that scene. I, I, Super relatable. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you raise your kids to kill your dad. Uh-huh. The circle of life. I, I like uh, in that scene too. I like when, when Orm, Orm is like, all right, sh- tell me what the fuck is going on right now. And he just very quickly like turns his like, very well follow me captain just like snaps like out of it and just like shuts his emotions down it gave me like weird like sheldon from big bang theory energy i have not watched that that what sheldon is like yeah the weird emotional shifts i mean in his instance it's clearly some form of autism i don't think it is for david yeah i don't want to imply that david does what he does because he's on the spectrum (laughs) right Uh, he's i mean he's certainly on a spectrum but it is a synthetic He's on, spectrum. It's just on a spectrum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, David is like I, again. I feel like it's like it's like masking. I guess if we want to continue yeah. with the autism parallels, <laughs> or it was like no, again, it's like he's like like him being upset about the xenomorph dying is like his real self. But then he sees that that's not socially acceptable in the moment. So he's like, oh, yeah. I have to do a different thing in order to like get what I want or like be socially acceptable again with him it's more of like a sociopathic thing right I think. yeah he's yeah he is um but it is just like situation he has the mat like you see the that's why he's so good at being walter too is like he right is used to 
just like being a different person, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. He's also really good at swallowing face hugger embryos. Oh, that part and... made, makes me gag at the very end. It's gross. It's so fucking gross. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anything else, Kenny? Uh, yeah, I had a couple of just little uh, very brief stray thoughts that I wanted to hit that just made me laugh or that I enjoyed. Uh, first off, uh, during yeah. the opening scene, uh, when uh, Wayland and David are talking, uh, the fucking look on Wayland's face when David reminds him that he's going to die, I was like, ha get fucked, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had no right being yes. that angry um, about that. <laughs> good Guy Pierce acting, though, like true yeah it was it was great it was really good justifying him being cast in the role finally <laughs> uh when uh david's leading them into like the courtyard temple area and then leads them yeah. into the building i was really glad to finally see the very brief return of the big huge stone heads from prometheus oh yeah it's like every time there's a big stone head i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and that's and then when David and Walter fight, they fight near a big stone head, right? Yeah. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes, I believe okay. I believe they fight in that big yeah. room that has like the four or five of them on the walls. I think, yeah, yeah, that's a good set piece. We love us, we love a stone head on this podcast. Oh, good to we know. certainly do. Uh, my notes once again pointing out how cool the uh, miniature xenomorph is that's like mimicking david's movements we've already talked about him like yeah. four times but man that guy ruled so much yeah. it bears repeating i mean we um, can't talk about him enough honestly yeah. major love <laughs> get them get this man on the podcast <laughs> that would be huge. what i would want like a fully articulated like marionette puppet of that little guy you could totally do i bet there's got to be someone that's made that on like etsy or something like that'd be that'd be a lot of fun just to have break them out at parties you know have them dance across <laughs> the coffee table Oh, uh, the final, the very final thing that I wanted to mention that like, you know, I mean, I could mention more of my notes, but then we'd be here for another 40 minutes and a lot of stuff is stuff we've already talked about. The one other thing that I did think was interesting, like stylistically that the movie did is that during the scene at the end, after the xenomorph like is on the ship and there's only like a couple of people left alive and they're, uh, they're hurting the thing to the terraforming bay like during yes. that sequence the movie starts putting in some insert shots of like xenomorph pov for like yeah, some reason i don't know why they started doing that and like it was cool but it only happens a couple of times it's only a couple of seconds each time and i'm not really sure why they're in there it was a weird choice but i don't think it was necessarily a bad choice i just thought it was an interesting yeah. like thing for them to just suddenly introduce in the last 15 minutes of the movie because that's like the only time ever in the movie that it happens so i just thought it was weird that's yeah right. it is it is kind of weird i don't like i thought it was pretty extraneous like i'm like why are they wouldn't it be more interesting if they did this during one of like during just like most other scenes with the alien in it honestly <laughs> any of the other scenes that was like the it, least yeah. interesting yeah. scene they could have done that with just give us like a pov shot before it pounces on yeah. coal right or inside like, of yeah. fucking one of those guys oh my god yeah before it bursts out like, like a... inside of ledward like you see ledward or, jerking and then shit. you just see like poo yeah. pov inside it's... of him like, <laughs> like you know? it's so it's so fucking funny intense. that you say that because while i was poking around doing some research last night i found out that some company released like a alien covenant vr yeah. experience and the idea oh, no. is that you are the chest burster. Well, in this case, it would be the blood burster. And the scene they do yeah. it with is the scene where it comes out of Ledward and attacks Corinne. Yeah, it's called Alien Covenant in Utero. And apparently you can download it on Steam. I'm not going to oh, do funny. that, but y'all should. One of y'all <laughs> should. I would love to hear about it. Well, I got to buy like a VR headset for that. I don't know. That's true. My... um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of who I know that's a VR headset. My bo- Ask him if I can borrow it. My boss's friend. <laughs> You're like, this is really important. I'm going to need you to send this to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it back. Yeah, we'll make Neil be the one to do it. That's right. Yeah. Fuck, I don't want to do that. 
In the Alien versus Predator <laughs> PC games, when he plays the alien in Alien versus Predator 2, you start as a face hugger. You got to crawl around until you find someone to like impregnate. Mm. Then you switch in the next level to the chest burster and you start by ripping your way out of the chest. So I have kind of seen it in, for, in first person perspective. That's kind of cool. So I think I've done it. I don't really need to do it in a more realistic way. Whoa. I've just found while you were talking about that, <laughs> while you were talking about whatever bullshit you were saying, I just found a wow. I just Fuck found you, dude. <laughs> a xenomorph plush online. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of it's them. It's a zipper mouth plush, but then when you yep. unzip the mouth, there's a second pocket that also has a zipper on the inside. That's incredible. <laughs> and it's thirty five dollars, which really is not that bad so this no that and it looks like it sits up too which is pretty good they make like a plush face huggers and shit that still scare the crap out of me no like, face huggers are too scary it had it would have to be gross. a grown xenomorph for me for whatever that's right. like the least scary one because it's the least invasive i think or that little tiny dude <laughs> yeah i still haven't found one of him actually <laughs> um still looking I don't know. Now I'm just on, yeah, I'm just on Google shopping. So this, <laughs> none of this is too, <laughs> is too um, important, but here's a xenomorph with. It's probably going to stay in anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it probably, especially the part where you're like, while you were talking, I wasn't listening. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> okay. Is there a xenomorph with tits in one of the movies or was this just made as a, to be a product? Uh, no, <laughs> there was not a xenomorph. Well, with well, it. not in the movies, too. but <laughs> big ones too. <laughs> Jesus fucking. Christ. Well, in the Marvel comic, oh. there oh, is no. a xenomorph that looks feminine and has boobs. So yeah, there's a sexy uh, xenomorph lady apparently in the Marvel books. Yeah. We haven't actually seen her. We've only seen her in a guy's dreams, as far as I know, at this point. <laughs> oh, so correct. she may not be yes, real. It's correct. just his kink. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Honestly, that would be another good alien movie. Is a movie about a guy that wants to fuck the aliens, um, and then I guess that's just what Splice is. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that what Splice exactly is. What I'm pretty Splice sure is, yes. that's what Species is. Also, like I'm pretty sure they've done also that. Okay. correct. Yes. Okay, I guess this is maybe this is a more common thought that men have than I thought sure. it would be. There's several <laughs> ebooks available on Kindle. I'm sure. Oh God. Um, I don't know from experience. I mean, okay, <laughs> nice little asterisk there. <laughs> I mean, I know, quote unquote, from experience, from the sense of I've seen oh, them no. while I was searching for other things. Well, I was, but... and this just popped up. <laughs> Actually, that is kind of true. The fucking Kindle search is like a the wild west. Really, yeah. I don't have a Kindle. Yeah, yeah so. like if you go, yeah, if you go and try and find a book on Kindle, like if you go onto the Kindle Kindle store and type in like alien book or whatever, it'll give you every single result that has an alien, like yeah. the word alien in the description that's a book so like every single cheapo like 99 cent like you know fucking uh romance novel where some chick like fucks an alien or whatever like all of those will also <laughs> yeah. come up as part of your search and like they don't let you separate by like book genre so you can't like, like I don't want to see porn <laughs> like, yeah, you can't do that. So like Alien Cold Forge will show up right next to like, you know, dominated by the Alien King book five or whatever, you know? Yeah, I don't I guess I just don't get alien kinks. Like, I don't think aliens are sexy. Like I get like vampires and shit. Maybe I'm just like too traditional but <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'm vanilla for not wanting that's to fuck a xenomorph but that's my hot take today. <laughs> I, I feel like if you went to the kindle search and typed in jurassic park you would maybe have to go two pages before you find a book about a dude fucking a t-rex you probably won't even need so, to go to the second page. well i get it though because the t-rex is routinely set up as like a hero figure in those movies <laughs> that's true the yeah the i i could kind of, well it's still bestiality though so yeah yeah anyway <laughs> kindle kindle's wild uh, <laughs> good to know so jade i know you got that big terraforming mission to get onto, and i've got some uh books to read that i just bought for 99 cents on kindle <laughs> <laughs> 
And Kenny, you've got to talk me out of doing that. So I'm not going to talk you out of doing that. Sorry. <laughs> I got to go shake my fuel cells, get them nice and bubbly so I can blast off. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, I think we should wrap this one up. Uh, Jade, where can people find you and the things you do online if you want them to? Oh, God. Okay, well. You don't have to plug anything <laughs> if you don't want to, by the way. Well, I'll plug my letterbox. <laughs> yeah, plug your letterbox. My letterbox is Jade Sketches. I talk about nice. movies on there, too. Much less than this. It's usually just one sentence each. But, um, yep, you can see how I rated Prometheus and Covenant. Um, I'm also Jade Sketches on Instagram and yeah. maybe tiktok i'm not sure not sure mm -hmm. very nice and jade you were famous for doing the uh the podcast artwork for they made another yes. one yes sir that's my that's my claim to fame <laughs> we're gonna give Corey a free plug there yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that bastard <laughs> all he does is take he never gives back <laughs> so true <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, where can people find you? I am on Twitter. My handle is at C Y H O B B E Z. And uh, yeah, come by, uh, see me, uh, send out shitty tweets that I'm bad at doing, and follow me because uh, I don't really have very many followers. And so, yeah, just come on by and hang out. I'll probably show up sooner or later if you do. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Final Neil. I tweet even less than Kenny. Uh, Follow the show on Twitter at Crew Expenda Pod. Subscribe to the show in your podcast app. Rate us and review us. Give us good reviews. Five stars all around, etc. We're going to get out of here. Jade, thank you again so much for joining us on this episode of Crew Expendable. Thanks for having me. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a blast. I had a Baja blast. Hey, yo. <laughs> Until next time... Stay, Stay frosty. frosty. <laughs>